Welcome to Simulating Bronny James' NBA Career 100 Times. As you can tell from the length of this video, we have a lot of content to go through, so I'm going to keep this intro relatively short compared to most of my videos. So here we are in NBA 2K22, and as I said, we're going to be simulating Bronny James' career 100 times. That is real. For a lot of you who've played 2K before and played the My League mode, you would know that on the PC version, it takes a lot less time to simulate. But after running multiple tests on current gen and next gen, I found found that I got the results I was actually looking for on the next gen version of the game. I ran over 50 tests with 50 different brawnies and just from those tests I got more diverse results on the next gen, uh, sorry, on the next gen version compared to the current gen version. The current gen version was pretty stale and forward. I didn't like the sim engine on that game so we decided to go with next gen. Even though it's going to take me nearly twice as long to complete, I want to do it for the better content. Because simulating a career on PC 2K takes anywhere between 30 to 40 five minutes but simulating on next gen ps5 2k can take up to an hour and a half per career so i'm going to simulate brian's career blah 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 we're going to get to the end and for most of the video you're going to see a screen like this where it shows brian retiring on whatever team it was however many years he played and what overall he retired at if i were to show you every detail of brian's career for every single career we would be here for over 50 to 100 hours and i know you guys don't want to be here for that long obviously this video is still pretty long but you know you get the point so after every brian career we're going to break down his stats, everything like that. Starting with his progression scale, which I believe isn't even in the current gen version of 2K, where it shows his overall every single year and how he gets better or how he gets worse. Because sometimes a Brody can have high tendencies and put up big numbers, but he can end up being like around an 85 overall. But we would never know that because of the progression scale that we have if I were to do this on current gen. And then we would look at his normal stats, everything like this, and we would scroll down and look at each season. And then we're going to look at his accolades and see how many championships he won, how many MVPs he won, how many championships he won as the best player on his team the second best player was your role player etc you get the point and after doing all that for each career we're gonna do one last thing i present to you Bronny's nba career scale so for each one of these careers that Bronny has we're gonna go ahead and rank them so if we feel he had a steph curry kobe type career we'll put him somewhere in this area like a 7.6 whatever it may be the list goes on if he has a jamal crawford t mac type career we'll put him anywhere between 2.2 and 2.8 now this scale took a very long time to make and actually have it make somewhat sense this scale is very ring and accolade dependent because we don't have all the information for every single season of Brian's career. We don't know every single detail of every single season. We don't know him losing in the finals one year or him losing in the conference finals, making multiple finals appearances. We only know the championships he won, his base stats, his MVP awards, and other basic stuff like that. So we have to make it very ring and MVP and accolade based and also obviously the statistical base because we don't have that outside information, which is why someone like Bill Russell is number 10 on the list, which I think it's, you know, universally known that MJ is better than Bill Russell all time, but still Bill Russell has 11 championships and 5 MVP so that is going to rank him higher on the Bronny NBA career scale. And then as you kind of go up the scale, you have Johnny Flynn, no rings being a bust, Jamal Crawford, just a very good player for a long time, T-Mac, you know, one of the best players in the league for a little bit, had some highs, had some downs, Kyrie Irving winning a ring is the second best player, Ray Allen winning two rings, one as a role player one, or both of them as a role player, but one where he was like the third or fourth best player, Isaiah Thomas winning two rings is the best player, Curry winning two rings at the time of this recording, Curry winning two rings or sorry, as the second best player, you want to argue best, whatever you want to do. Kobe winning five rings, MJ winning six, but Russell winning 11, you get the point. I'm glad I decided to make that skill because I didn't want to just come on here and just do the careers and just show them off and that be it. Actually having to rank them is a lot of fun. So this, I'm going to be, it's going to be really exciting to see what this Bronny career skill looks like by the 100th career. Well, hopefully that intro was somewhat short compared to my other videos, but let's go ahead and get into simulating Bronny James's NBA career 100 times. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff follow me on twitter whatever you got to do because of how long this video really is going to take so you know let's get into it let's start off with career number one uh, no real way to intro this off, but let's go ahead and get into it. So here we are at the end of Bronny's first career. Just to make this clear, I'm recording about 30 of these in a row. So I make three different accounts because you can only have 10 my leagues at a time on next gen. So these are all going to be pretty much blind reactions. I don't remember anything that happened within most of these careers because I'm just simming through just trying to get through all these and get them all recorded and finished. So I don't remember anything. So all these are going to be blind reactions. But anyway, he retired with the Clippers. He retired as an 89 overall. So he's probably going to be pretty good. Let's check out his stats. What did he add? 
average for his entire career. He averaged 24 points a game. Okay, so that's very solid. He started out in New Orleans. He was drafted by. He played there for a while. Went to Chicago, and then he was there for a while for the Clippers. Okay, and then he ended off his career with the Clippers. And also another point, we're not going to be sitting here for like you know five minutes looking over his entire career stats because like we we don't really need to know that he shot 42 percent from three and 24. Like that's great and all, but you know we're here for a broad statement to give a broad rating for each one of his careers. So I would say his best statistical season was probably 2034. He averaged nearly 30 points a game. So probably when he was in Chicago, he was probably playing at his best. But he also played good toward the end of his career as well, averaging 29 in 2041. And now we have his accolades where he was a four-time MVP, a one-time NBA champion, a 12-time All-Star, made first-team All-NBA eight times, second-team five times, and third-team one time. So this guy was a top-five player throughout the most of his career, won some MVPs as well. He was the best player in the world for probably a good amount of time as well, and was also able to cap it off with that NBA championship. Another good thing about Next Gen is that you can see his overall throughout his entire career. So we never really got over, I think, maybe like a 92 overall, it looks like. So that might have been the highest he got. So he never really turned into a superstar, but he played like it. So now let's go ahead and rank this career. So if we just kind of have to go up the standings on it, obviously better than Johnny Flynn, better than Jamal, T-Mac, Kyrie, Ray Allen. Even though Ray Allen has two rings, but he got that second ring when he was really a role player. Bronny got his ring in the midst of his prime as the best player on his team. Probably. We don't have those details, but I'm going to assume he was probably the best player on his team. So I think right under Isaiah Thomas would be a good spot. I know IT doesn't have four MVPs. Again, making the scale was very difficult to make because you have to factor all that kind of stuff in. But I would put him right under Isaiah Thomas. Because I have to keep in mind I'm making this ranking mostly off the amount of rings they won. That is the priority in this ranking system. So I think right at 5.8 is a good spot for this first Brawny. And before we get into his second career and on, I'm sure some of you were asking, why don't we look at his career totals and all that kind of stuff? Again, this video is already going to be insanely long going over career totals and seeing where he ranks in every single category we're gonna be here forever and again we're looking for a broad scale of his career we don't need every single statistic now if i see Bronny average like 35 a game for his career i may be like okay did he like is he you know the highest scoring player of all time you know we'll go take a look but if it's not obvious we're not gonna look career number two is here Bronny played 20 years in the nba he retired as an 82 overall here's his progression wow he never got better than like an 87 yeah this is this this might be what this this might be a tough career. I mean, it's a solid career, but it's not gonna be a maybe not even a Hall of Fame type career. Let's check out his stats. Wow, look at what this is why I love 2K um 2K's next gen simulation process. Like th there could be so many different careers for one player, whereas on current gen, especially on PC, like it is so bad. But this is looking pretty rough. So we averaged 18 points a game for his entire career. He played for Phoenix, Milwaukee, Sacramento, Memphis, Utah. <laughs> Damn, he was all over the place. He stayed in Utah for a while, then Brooklyn, then retired in Denver. And as for his awards, he was able to capture one NBA championship. Wait, in 2045, was that his last season? 2040, yeah, he won an NBA championship in his last season. Okay, so I mean, he was probably like a glorified role player. I mean, he was he was probably a starter or, or just a really solid role player. He was an 11-time All-Star, third-team All-NBA one time. He was first-team All-Defense twice, second-team All-Defense three times, and he was six-man of the year one season. So this looks like a pretty six-man type career. So if I had to go ahead and rank this career, obviously better than Johnny Flynn, but I think he falls right in between Jamar Crawford and T-Mac. Now, I, I would say the ring helps, but he did get it on his last season. But I think because he did get the ring, he probably puts himself at around a 2.6. He was a, an 11 time All Star. So he was a pretty dominant player for a while, but just was never a close to being a superstar. He was just a very good player for a long time. So I think right at 2.6 might be a good spot. I think if he didn't get the ring, I'd probably have him at like 2.4. Or actually, maybe I can give him the 2.8 just because 11 time All Star is pretty crazy. That, that is a lot of All Star appearances. So I think 2.8 is a good spot for. Yeah, I like that spot. Again, we, we could adjust these in the future if we see fit, but for now, I like the spots we have so far. All right, career number three, and Bronny played 12 years in the NBA and retired as a 65 overall. We may have our first bust. Bronny was actually a three-time NBA champion. Okay, wow, that really, this kind of career really messes up our system. It really does a number on it, but again, we're going to have some common sense when it comes to the system. So here's his progression. So he was able to get to around an 86, 87 overall, but by his eighth season just took a big decline. Like he really fell off the face of the earth and went as far down as a 65 overall when he retired. And it looks like on the injury report that he was dealing with some strong injuries on his shoulder, on his left hip, and on his knees. And he has some tough injuries. So maybe injuries is what killed 
his career. But look at these stats. Oh my God. Look at those last two seasons. Those are rough. He didn't even play those last two years. He actually played pretty wow his rookie season he averaged five points a game he must have got no burn on this team but um yeah he actually had a few nice seasons for the thunder when did he win that championship when, when did when did he win that when when did he win that ring he was a three-time champion in 2025 2026 and 2027 so he won a ring when he averaged 12 points a game when he averaged 17 and, and one where he averaged 21 points a game so he probably wasn't the best player on this okc team but he was probably like a top three to five player for sure but man such a short career and man this this is this is one crutch really gonna throw off our ranking system because it's gonna be so hard to rank this guy well here we are let's try to rank him and again if you're looking for consistency with this ranking system it's going to be close to impossible every career is so different in so many ways so is it better than the last career we just saw i would say probably not because the man really only had like six good season seasons in his career and two of the championships he won he wasn't really like a main catalyst he was kind of a side project and then for the one ring he did win he was probably a top three to five player on that team the three championships is really carrying him if he didn't win those three rings he would probably be like under jamal crawford but i the three rings is carrying the hell out of him i would probably have to put him right under the 2.8 yeah it's kind of maybe even 2.4 oh man that that's a really tough on the right those three championships are carrying the hell out of him uh, I, I probably put him 2.6. That seems like a good spot. Either 2.6 or 2.4. I can't put him, I can't put him over T-Mac. That, that'd be insane. He was never, this, this Bronny was never one of the best players in the league. He was never even close. Career number four, Bronny playing 18 seasons, retiring as a 90 overall. So he's going to be probably pretty good. Here's how he progressed. So he was probably stagnant around like a 95 overall for a good portion of his career. And then he kind of fell off, not too hard. So he was a pretty good player, but it took him a while to get really good. It took him six years to get up to that stature so he was actually pretty you know he was solid for the first four seasons and then he really started to amp it up and here's his career stats what did he average for his entire career while he played he played for two teams his whole career that's probably not going to happen pretty often but he averaged 26 points for his whole career pretty rough in houston for the first years i mean he was a rookie so i'm not going to give him to him. he definitely picked it up as he kept playing longer and then he had some 30 point game seasons yeah he, he was pretty good for the for the majority of his career he was a six-time mvp a three-time champion 13 times made first team all nba a 17 times all 17 time all-star and 13 all nba maybe he won some defensive player awards but i can't really know because you can only display six of them at a time i can check right here if you want any yeah okay he didn't win any defensive player of the year awards just gonna double check it you never know all right well now we gotta go ahead and rank this career and two of those championships he won he won the first championship i believe his rookie season so he, he didn't really play a huge part but that third championship he won he was the man the second one he was a very solid player for that team but man six mvp Keys is a lot. I think this career has to go around a 7.6 because Curry won three championships, but two of those rings he won where you could argue he was not the best player on the team. And Bronny having six MVPs is insane. So I think 7.6 is the perfect spot for this career. Career number five, Bronny played 18 seasons, retired as an 88 overall. Here's the progression. He also got up. This feels very similar to the last career he just had. So he, you know, had a slow start getting up there, then eventually got up around his fourth, fifth season. And then he was a 95 overall for the majority majority then kind of slowed down but not too much toward the end let's check out his career stats so he had a couple 30 point uh per game season he averaged 22 points a game for his career so nothing too crazy he played for one two three three teams okay that's not that many and he was a three-time mvp a five-time champion Wow, a 12-time All-Star, first team All-NBA eight times, second team twice, and third team once. Now, let's see when he actually won those NBA championships and he, and if he was the man. So, his first one he won in 2026, he was, you know, a mere role player. 2028, he was a very substantial player on the team. Maybe not the best, but one of. He won one in 2030, probably the same role, so he was probably a top three player on the team, but not the best. And then he went back to back in 2040 and 2041. So, he it feels like he's never won a championship as the best player on his team, but for for most of them, he was probably a top three player. Now, he did win three MVPs, but none of those MVP years were years he won the championship. Those were kind of mid career 2034 to 2038 when he was averaging like 30 a game. So, Bronny couldn't win a championship when he was the best player, but as a supporting role as a top three player, he could get it done. This career feels right over Curry because, again, Curry really only won one championship at the time of recording this video because, again, they're in the final, so I don't know when they're going to win. But at the time of recording this video, they won this champ. He's only won one championship where he was the best player. So, I think it's better than Curry's career but I don't think it's better than the career we just saw before this one. So for that, I think a 7.2. I would like to give him 7.3, but I didn't put that on scale. So maybe when we get to down to more careers, maybe we can 
flip it around, but I think 7.2 is a good number. All right, career number six, Bronny played 21 years in the league, retired at 40 as an 82 overall. Let's see his progression. So again, kind of getting around that 95 overall area for a pretty long time. Had a little dip in his 11th season. Maybe he got injured probably. That's probably what that was. And um, was a very good player for a long time. Let's see his career stats. Wow, he went to a lot of teams there on the... Okay, no, he was in Chicago for a while there and then kind of bounced around. But first, complete stats, averaging 27 points a game, seven assists, shooting that percentage. I mean, that, that is pretty good, man. He had a plethora of 30 point per game seasons and he was a six-time MVP and a four-time NBA champion, made first team 14 times and was a 16-time All-Star. This, this has... Not GOAT potential, but pretty up there. And he won those championships in 2034, which he was probably the best player. Only averaged 28, but he was probably the best player. 2036, he averaged 32 a game. He was absolutely the man. He won in 2038, where obviously he was the man. And then he won in 2041, where maybe he could have been the second best player. Most likely was. So again, this rating scale is based off of rings, but you also have to use a little bit of common sense. I would put this career right over Kobe's. Kobe has five championships, but for three of those, you could argue he may have been the second best player. Maybe for one of them, he was the best. But you could argue for at least two of them he wasn't the best player and Bronny most likely won all of his championships as the best player on his team and was a six-time MVP compared to Kobe's one I'm debating between 8.2 or 8.4 again if there was an 8.3 I'd probably put him there so I'm probably gonna put this career at an 8.4 he's got the longevity he's got the numbers to back it up he won a championship as the best player on every single one of those runs he was a six-time MVP I, I gotta give it to him career number seven is here he retired on the Nets playing 18 seasons retiring as a 78 overall here's his progression so we got a little over a 90 overall for a few for like a good seven eight seasons then kind of declined so he was never a superstar but um, was a very good player. Maybe he played like a superstar. We'll have to see. As for his stats, he retired in Brooklyn. How long did he play? Oh my God, he played in Brooklyn for a long ass time. He only played for two teams his whole career. Started off his career pretty hot, averaging 20 points a game as a rookie. Was still playing solid. So he was just a very good player for a long time. It's looked like now we'll see if he has the championships and accolades to back it up though. His best years were right here in Brooklyn, averaging 29, 28, 27, 28. Yeah, his best years were for sure at Brooklyn. And he was a two-time MVP, a 10-time All-Star, first team all defense twice so he never won an NBA championship so let's go ahead and rank this career I think he's right over T-Mac because he does have a long he, he, he played the longevity game he had a long career he was very good for a long time won two MVPs but he was never able to capture that championship so I think he's probably even right under Kyrie because at least Kyrie won a championship as the second best player Bronny James could never even get that done but man when you win two MVPs it is hard to put you not as one of the best players but again this scale is very ring relative so you have to remember that when doing this list I can use as much common sense as I want, but this is kind of how, how I have to go about it to keep everything fair. And again, you can go, well, there, look at all the NBA teams he made, the MVPs. I get all that. But again, for the last time, because I know I'm going to get comments about it, this is a very ring relative scale with using other common sense factors. Career number eight is here. Bronny played 20 years in the NBA, retired on the Mavericks as an 80 overall. Let's see his progression. So he was kind of right at a 90 overall for most of his career, dealt with a few injuries, which is worth why those dips happen, and then just kind of fell off a little bit toward his 18th year, but he has longevity for sure. Let's check out his numbers. So, um, I mean, pretty normal numbers at the end of his career. Did he have any crazy seasons? Okay, in, in um, New Orleans, he was pretty good. And um, what did he average for his career? 22 points a game? Not bad. So his best season was right here, 20-30 with New Orleans, averaging 30 a game, shooting 50% from the field and 46% from three. Here's his award history. So a three-time MVP, a 16-time All-Star, first team All-NBA seven times. So very similar to the career we just saw before this one. All right, so for this ranking, I'm going to use a little more common sense because the man won first team all defense 10 times and won one more MVP and that might be enough to put him over Kyrie I, I, I think I think that's enough to put him over so I'm gonna put him at a 4.2 that, that seems fair and again for the um, this is the last time I'm saying it. I, I understand you're going narrow the man won first team all defense 10 times and was a three-time MVP he should probably be even over right out I understand but again for the last time this scale is very ring relative. Just remember that. Okay, great. All right, thank you. I would be here forever if I had to take every little part of his career into consideration to make up how good his career really was. We would be here forever. Career number nine is here, and he played 13 years in the NBA and retired as a 67 overall. Let's check out some of his stats. So um, he played in Memphis, where he literally did nothing. Well, actually, he had some years in Memphis where he actually played here, and then he played for the Knicks and was drafted by the Knicks. And he had some pretty strong 
strong season. Look at this, 27 points a game, 28 points a game, 25, 26, 23 for Memphis. Like, he had a pretty solid career as far as numbers-wise, but it was a very short-lived NBA career. And he was a four-time All-Star, never even made first-team All-NBA. This is looking like a Team Mac career for sure. Well, again, he had a few solid years where he put up some good numbers, probably the best player on his team, but those could be, you know, uh, inflated. That's the right word. And one more point, I'm not going to remember every single career that I put out here. So you can't, you know, don't say to me, oh my God, you made this ranking for career number two, but for career number 37, like you did a different thing and the careers were very similar. Like I'm not gonna be able to remember every single career that I do, but um, these, this career is pretty rough. So I think right at a 2.4 is fair. Had some solid good years as the best player on his team, but those could be inflated stats. Never really any playoff success and um, never really was like the first team guy that T-Mac was. Like I, I don't think he was probably the talent that T-Mac was. Um, so I, I like him right at 2.4. I can make the argument for 2.6, but I mean, you know, we're splitting hairs here. So, you know, 2.4 is fine. Career number 10 is here. He retired as a 40 over, sorry, a, the age of 40, retired as an 80 overall and played 21 years in the NBA. I forgot to show the player progression or the progression of his overall in the last career. My bad about that. But, um, I mean, he was a bust anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So <laughs> anyway, I mean, not a bust, but you get what I mean. In comparison to the career we want him to have, I guess it's a bust, but whatever. Okay. So anyway, Bronny was around the 90 overall after most of his career dealt with some injuries and then fell off after his 18th season here are his stats we played in chicago miami for a long ass time phoenix milwaukee toronto he was all over the place for a little bit but he was drafted by toronto has some good ass stats and toronto played as the best player on the team for a little bit these are some very solid numbers even in miami averaging 30 a game late in his career that's really good that's good for the, lo the longevity debate and the career numbers of 24 a game five rebounds seven assists is very solid and he was a five-time mvp a one-time champion an 18-time all-star first team all nba 10 times. That is pretty impressive. But he won the championship in 2044. When, when, when was that? 2044. Okay, so he was still a good player for Miami. Maybe not the best, but he was probably like the third or fourth best player, probably. Let's go ahead and rank this career. I like him to be over Ray Allen because Ray Allen won a championship where he was like the third or fourth best player. The same with Bronny here. The second championship he won as a role player holds value, but in this case where this Bronny won five MVPs, it probably stumps that ring. Again, sometimes I have to use common sense with this, but again, we are mainly going off rings, but you know, got to use common sense sometimes. So I think I like him to be right at five point, either 5.2 or 5.4. 5.4 seems right. That is a lot of MVPs. So five, and he has the longevity going for him. So 5.4 seems like a good number. Career number 11 tier. Bronny played 19 years, retired with the Mavericks as an 87 overall. That's a pretty high overall to retire at. Let's go ahead and see his stats. So um, had a pretty long career, but he averaged for his entire career. He averaged 21 points a game. Kind of actually started off rough in OKC. Never really got his foot off the gas until his last year. Then he went to to the Lakers and played pretty well and then went to Utah was was really good had a 30 point game season as well so overall just a long solid career as far as what we see from the numbers and had a few really nice years here's his progression yeah I mean yeah that kind of start off rough for the first five or six years then really started to pick it up so the highest he ever was was probably around like a 93 94 overall and they kind of stayed stagnant around like a 92 for most of his career then he kind of declined towards that 16th season and as for his accolades he was a two-time MVP a five-time champion where wait did he four P 38 8, 39, 40, 41. He nearly five period. He won in 2036, a 13-time All-Star, first team All-NBA uh, four times and second team six times. So he won in 36 where he was probably the second or third best player. 38, he was probably the best player. 39 was probably the best player. 40 maybe was probably the second best player. 40, 41 was probably the second or third and then 42 was probably the second. So the only championship he probably won as the best player was what? This one, 38 or 39? Probably these two, maybe even. He could have still been the second best player as well. So this is going to be a tough rank because the man literally led a dynasty and I'm not really awarding points for dynasties but that is impressive so he won two we could argue he won two championships where he's the best player maybe only one of them he was the best player we don't know the makeups of these teams but I will assume that he won two of these as the best player so I think right at eight 8.2 is probably a good spot. I, I think 802 is good. Sorry, 8.2. 802. 8.2 <laughs> is a good spot for this one. I believe that 8.4 career, he had like six MVPs or like five of them, and he won five championships or four of them, and he was like the main catalyst for all of them. For this one, you know, he was maybe the main catalyst for two of them, and he won a few where he was like the second or third best player and only has two MVPs. So uh, just a notch under that one seems pretty fair. Here's career number 12. He played 19 years, retired on the Bucks as a 92 overall. Oh my. Okay, this, this, this Brian's probably going to become a demon or he's going to be a demon just an amazing voice crack there okay so yeah this is the highest overall i've ever seen brawny that's like a 97 overall this is the best brawny I've seen so far as far as his overall but he had a pretty not a slow start he went up slowly but it took him you know about 
seven years to hit that peak and then he kind of dipped off down to like a 95 for the most of his career and then he was a 95 for a good eight years and then he dipped off to a 94 and really never got that bad he just decided to stop playing basketball and here are his stats so he played in Milwaukee for a while wow, he played in Milwaukee for a long time then he played in Utah then OKC so yeah he was pretty bad to start off not bad but I mean when did he got okay for a number two pick in the NBA draft averaging seven points a game is pretty rough but you know maybe he was just on a really good team so you never really know but he really picked it up especially whoa when he got to utah he really picked it up back to back 30 point per game seasons 30 points a game in milwaukee yeah this this is probably statistically the best brawny i've seen so far because if you just take out these like two seasons here he probably averaged like 29 a game for his whole career like if, if you just took out these two seasons the man was a 10 time mvp a five-time champion where he four-peated a 17-time all-star a nine-time defensive player of the year and first team all nba 13 times holy sh nah nah bro nah this is insane do i even have to look at when he won those championships like i guess i have to so he four-peated from 2028 to 2031 okay so in 2038 he probably wasn't the best player 20 or 2029 he probably was the best player 2030 probably wasn't the best player so this four-peat he was probably like the third best player on this team maybe maybe second for some of them maybe these last years he was the second best player and then he won one in 2036 where he was the man he averaged 33 a game so Wow, this is going to be a hard one to rank because for most of these rings he won, he was like the third best player and then some of them he was the second. But my lord, I cannot ignore 10 MVPs and 9 Defensive Player of the Year awards. That is... That is really hard to ignore. If he would have just won more than one of these championships as the best player on the team because for four of them he did not, I could have put him over MJ. If he would have just won two of these rings as the best player on his team... I would give him the notch, but I can't, man. That's this this career right here had true GOAT potential, but it just fell right under it because of the whole because we prioritize rings. If we didn't prioritize rings, yeah, this career would be pretty up here. But this this ranking is very ring dependent, so because of that, we have to put him at an 8.8. 8. We, we have to. Career number 13 for LeBron. That 12th one is going to be very hard to match. But anyway, let, let's see what he did here. So here's the progression. He probably got around a 95 overall, maybe 94 for most of his career by year 5. And he was good for like 12, 13 years of that overall. Then had a little bit of a drop off and retired as an 87 overall. Here's his stats. So he played in Utah. That had multiple 30 point. Oh my, oh my God. Jesus Christ. He was killing it in Utah. Has some nice seasons in Brooklyn. Has some nice seasons in New Orleans as well. Jesus Christ, he scored a lot of points. And he was a 10-time MVP, a 3-time NBA champion, 14-time All-Star, 13-time first-team All-NBA. So he won three rings. That's pretty impressive. Let's see when he actually won those rings and if he was the man. So the first one he won was in 2028, where he was the man for sure. 30 points a game, he was that guy. And then he won one in 35, where he was the man as well. And then he won one in 2038, where he was a demon. Where he <laughs> That might be one of the greatest rings of all time, where he was an absolute demon demon for so every single ring he won he was the best player but i think i have to put him right under the last career we just saw because although he did win more rings where he was the man it is very hard for me to debate over winning nine defensive player of the year awards you would probably have to win all you would he would probably have to win five championships where he was the man but he only won three so i'm gonna give him the notch right here but yeah those those um those mvps are are, are carrying that defensive player of the year is helping out a lot for sure so um yeah i i, I gotta put him right at 8.6 we have pretty much almost every single eight filled right here but again we're, if we have more around the eight then we're gonna fill them around for sure so back to back pretty insane careers we're now on career number 14 with Bronny playing 19 years retiring as a 77 overall here's his progression oh my god this is a Bust! Holy sh! I've never we haven't seen a career this bad. He didn't even he barely maybe even got over 85 for a few years. He was awful. Let's see his stats. So yeah, I mean he's probably okay. He broke 20 one season there in 2038. Did he actually have some? He actually has some good seasons. So although the overall wasn't there. He just, um, you know, he had a few nice seasons, but nothing crazy. He was probably the best player on this team in Chicago in 2031, but I mean, not like it really mattered. The man was a five-time All-Star, first-team All-NBA one time. He made second-team All-Defense twice, six-man of the year four times. So yeah, this is a Jamal Crawford-ass career. I think him getting five All-Star nods puts him slightly over Jamal Crawford, so right at 2.2 was fine. If he didn't have the All-Star appearances, he probably... Would even be... Nah, he won four six-man of the year awards. So, yeah, I, I would put him right at 2.2. That seems fine. Career number 15, Bronny played 20 years in the league, retiring at a 39-year-old, 83 overall. Here's his progression. So, he really never got... He got right to a 90 toward the end of his career for the last, like, that year, 12 to 17. But... 
he was never really that crazy, so he was never a superstar. But let's see if he has the numbers to show for it. So he has some pretty solid seasons here in OKC. Yeah, okay, these are just some really solid numbers, nothing too crazy. Why did he just randomly average 12 rebounds a game in Chicago? What the hell is that? He was a three-time NBA champion, a 14-time All-Star, first-team All-NBA six times. So you know what? Maybe he was perceived as one of the best players in the league. He sure he played like it, but overall-wise, he was never really there. And he made first-team All-Defense four times. That's also impressive. He won the rings in 2027. Okay, that one. Oh no, he he won it here where he averaged 17 a game. So he was a viable role player, or you know maybe he was like the third or fourth best player. And then he won one in 2030. So all the rings he got, he was a relatively he was just a role player really. The three championships are absolutely carrying, but I don't think it's enough to put him over T Mac because again the rings he never really he didn't win one where he was the second best player. He won them when he was like like fourth or third or fourth like that in that area. So just for that, I probably put him at 2.8. That seems fair. Yeah, if he, if again, if he didn't have the rings, he'd probably be like a 2.4, 2.2 even maybe. But he had some solid years, had some 20 point per game seasons, made some first team all defensive years, even was first team all NBA some years. But still, he just wasn't the talent that T Mac was. So I, I will put him at a 2.8. Career number 16, Bronny playing 20 years, retiring on the Bulls as an 82 overall. Here's his progression. So he got a little over. He, he was probably at around like a 94, 93 for a good like eight seasons, then slowly just declined down. Let's take a look at some of his numbers. So he played in Chicago for. Wop. Whoa, okay, so he may have not hit that superstardom as far as his progression, but he was putting out some great numbers. Averaging 34 a game one year for Chicago. Had some big 30-point-per-game season. So he only played for two teams, Chicago and OKC. Wow, okay, that, again, that is pretty rare for as, as often as people move during 2K Sims. And he was a two-time MVP, a two-time NBA champion back-to-back, -back, so we'll see how important those championships were. And he was a 12-time first-team All-NBA. So he won in 2028 and 2029. Okay, so that first ring he got didn't really... Really I mean, no, it matters, of course. But he was more so a role player, or maybe like the third best player on the team, or fourth best player. And then as for this one, he was probably the second best player. I I'm not going to give him first player, but I'll give him second best player. So two championships, two MVPs, and both rings, he wasn't the best player. But he had some pretty amazing statistical seasons, averaging well over 30s in a lot of those years. So I think I'm going to rank this one as a 5.8, just because of those regular season stats. Like They're hard to ignore. Career number 17, Bronny retiring after 20 years on the Clippers. Well, he didn't play the Maybe he did, but he retired on the Clippers. Here's his progression. So he was around like a 93 for a little bit, then kind of went down to like a 92, and then he just kind of slowly went down. So a very solid career. Let's take a look at some of those numbers. So he was he was on the Clippers for a long ass time. Wait, the whole time? Okay, he was almost on the Clippers for that. So after his rookie deal, he was a restricted free agent and still decided, I guess, the Indiana Pacers didn't want to keep him and ended up going to the Pacers. Sorry, ended up going to the Clippers. Again, just, there's a lot of careers here to go over, so I'm sorry if my mind gets kind of out of place. And it's also a lot of simulating. <laughs> and you guys know if you've done simulations or rebuilds, you guys know how long it takes to simulate just single seasons. Anyway, he was an eight-time MVP and a six-time champion. Okay, we this could this has potential to be his best career so far. So let's see, he won in 2030, and then he had a um uh back to back in 2032 and 2033, then he won in 2035, 2038. So he literally owned the 2030s. So in 2030, he was the man. He averaged 34 points a game. He was the man on that team. 2032, he was the man. He averaged 38 a game. Oh my god. And they obviously went back to back where he was the man again, averaging 32. In 2035, he was the man averaging 30. And 2038, okay, I can see the drop off there. So he was probably the second or third best player and then he won in 2043 he was probably also the second third best player so he won three rings where he was easily the man the guy and then for two of them he was you know he was he was good a lot of these careers are starting to fall into this eight to nine category between kobe and mj it's getting hard to rank them so this 8.8 was the one he won like nine defensive player of the years and he won like what two chips where he was the man he won like two others where he wasn't i'm gonna put this right at eight point uh 8.6 or 8.4 it's very close man because the, these these regular season stats he has are, are, are pretty crazy i think i'm gonna put him at an 8.6 you could argue 8.4 but i think 8.6 just feels more right so we're, we're gonna to go out with it. Here's career number 18. He played 19 seasons, retired as an 87 overall in the Bucks. And what the? This is one of the weirdest progression skills I've seen. So he was getting to be a good rookie, and then he just took a dip. He must have got, he must have tore his ACL or something, something crazy like that. And then he was a 93 overall for most of his career, slowly went down after that. And here's his stats. So he was solid in Milwaukee. Well, no, he was really good in Milwaukee for a little while there, just toward the end. He wasn't that good, but um, had some 30 point per game season. Look at these Phoenix numbers, averaging 36 a game, 34 a game, 30. He literally averaged. 30 his entire time in Phoenix. Oh, and there you go. Look at that Clipper year. He, he must have either not been on a team or he tore his ACL or something crazy like that. Look, oh my God, dude. The numbers, 
Wow, that injury kind of killed his career. I mean, it didn't kill it, but like, that really threw off his career for sure. How did he get the Phoenix to go back to the Clippers and go back to Phoenix? That is so weird. And then he was a nine-time MVP, a two-time NBA champion, and 11 times he made first-team All-NBA. He won his first ring in 2032, where he was the man easily. And then in 2040, he probably was the best player, but I guess you could argue he wasn't, but he, he probably was. I'm gonna put this career right under Kobe's. That seems like a good spot. He won two championships where he was the man just like Kobe. Obviously, he has a shit ton of MVPs. I got it. And he also has some numbers to show. But I guess that torn ACL kind of messed him up for a little bit. I, I don't know, man. It, it's really tough. He could really be right on the Kobe line as well. Like, I guess I'm not really rank. I'm not really putting people right on the line. So, I would say right under the Kobe. But you could argue for 8.2. It's really all around the same type of area. So, I'm not really going to argue it too much. Again, don't kill me in the comments if I just, you know, like, if, if that 8.2 crow is actually worse than this one. It's like, oh, but there you go. Like, again, we're all keeping it within the same area. This video is to see where his career is going to rank based off a boatload of data. So as long as we're in the ballpark of where we rank the career, then we're fine. Career number 19 is here. Bronny playing 21 years in the NBA, retiring with the Jazz as an 83 overall. Oh my God. Okay. What? Oh, he must have had an insane injury happen here. I actually want to see what it is. So I'm going to go to the Team Utah, and then I'm going to go to the injury report to see what this actual injury was. Wait, I don't see an injury here. It just says he was injured in 2025 for seven days a right shin splints there's no way that dropped him 30 overall so i don't know what the injury was but that is insane for him to drop down to a 40 overall i don't know what happened there anyway here's his career stats averaging um what would he average for his career let's go and see at the bottom he averaged 25 points per game for his career average wow he has some great years for the knicks especially just right out of his rookie season just popping off went to play an okc and averaged three points a game he either got injured or something something must have happened here yeah he only scored 174 points so he, he must have caught a big injury or i don't know then he went back to the knicks and just kept playing very very well. well his entire career was with the knicks except for he played for the hornets for one year and then utah for one year but these numbers are very solid probably was the best player on the knicks for a while maybe he had some other guys come in and help here and there but for the most part was probably the best player and he was a five-time mvp never won a championship an 18-time all-star 16 times first team all nba these are some pretty good numbers and one defensive player of the year in 2042 so on the end of his career so he was never able to get the championship which again as you guys know rings carry when you're making these rankings so i think again and right under Kyrie is fair. He won five MVPs. That's a lot. Again, I under I understand the five MVPs probably outweigh the championship that Kyrie won. But again, this scale this scale is very ring dependent, and we try to use common sense here and there. It, it's tough. Like, could I put him at four point two? I guess I could. I, I could get away with it maybe, but. Oh my, this is so hard to do. You guys, I hope you guys understand how hard this is. I'm going to keep him right under, Ky I'm, I'm going to put him right under Kyrie. That that seems fair. Because I'm also trying to take into account how unrealistic 2K is. And a player being 16 times first team all NBA and being 15 times first team all defense is very unrealistic. You know what I mean? Even winning five MPs is unrealistic as hell. So I'm trying to keep it like sort of realistic in a way. But with 2K, that is very hard. So I'm doing my best. And here we have career number 20 where LeBron retired on the Lakers. Maybe play with LeBron. You never know. 38 years old, 89 overall. Here's his progression. So he was up to like a 95, 96 overall for a little while there. Went down to about a 94, 93. So he was a superstar for a good portion of his career. And he was drafted to the Thunder, averaging 12 points a game. Picked it up in OKC later on. Played in OKC for a long ass time and had some great years with them. So around like what, 20, what, the 20, 2030 is when he started to really pick it up. 2031 is when he became a superstar. And um, he just got to do his thing, had some good years in Toronto and Lakers. He was okay. And he was an eight-time MVP, a seven-time champion. He won two, three, four-peated. Okay, wow. We'll have to see when he won those championships and how much he really mattered to those teams. That is that is insane. All right, so in 2028, he was a role player. He was probably the third or fourth best player. 2029, you could maybe make the argument he was the second best player, but probably the third best player. 2030 was the second best player. And then 2031, he took the reins as the best player. So, so far, he's won one ring as the best player. Two of them, eh, kind of role player supporting cast type shit. And then for the one, he was probably the second best player. And then he won in 2034, he was probably the best player. And then 2038, he was the best player. And then for 2043, I believe it was. Let me double check it. It was 2043. So um, yeah, he won it as probably being the second or third best player. So for three of these championships, he won as the best player. 
Uh, two of them he won as being really kind of a role player, and then for the other two of them, he won as probably being the second or third best player. It is very hard to be over Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan won six championships as the best player on his team. In Bronny's case right now, he won three of them. Eight MVPs is a lot, but I don't think it's enough to sway over Michael Jordan. So he's either right at 8.6 or 8.8 .8 for this one. I would probably give him the... Uh, I think I like 8.6 for this one. Oh, my God, dude. He did win a lot of championships. That is a lot of championships. Yeah. Seven championships. I'll, I'll give him the 8.8. Nah, I don't love it. I think I'd rather have an 8.6, but, you know, it, it's very close. Career number 21 is here. Bronny James retiring after 20 seasons and 83 overall in the Utah Jazz. And it looks like he never got higher than maybe like a 91, 92 overall. Then just kind of slowly went down after that eighth season, really. So... Never really hit superstar, but let's see if the stats show that he, you know, maybe played like a superstar. So he started off on the Knicks, averaging 17 a game. Stayed on Knicks for a long time. Had some big years where he was probably the best player on the team. What, what the hell? He played for the Knicks his entire career. Then his last two years, he played in OKC in Utah. So literally played for the Knicks for 18 seasons. And he was a 13-time All-Star, 10-time first-team All-NBA, 10-time first-team All-Defense, and 7-time second-team All-Defense. So a very good defensive player, multiple-time All-Star, but just never able to get that championship. So he's probably going to rank fairly low on our list, but I mean, you know, he still had a solid career, I guess. And if we're going to go ahead and rank this one, probably again right under Kyrie, like probably better than T-Mac. I mean, he was 10-time first-team All-NBA. All so yeah, he's probably maybe even you could put him at 3.6 because he never even won an MVP. And I think these two 3.8s, they at least won MVPs. So maybe even like a 3.4, honestly. Yeah, I think 3.4 fits this better. That might have been the first career where we never had either someone win a championship or an MVP. He was just an all-star and overall good player. And that's where I ended up getting him around that T-Mac area. So anyway, 19-year career for his 22nd NBA career. Here's his progression bar. So we got around that 92, 93 overall area. Maybe even like 93. Four, and then just kind of stayed stagnant at that 92 area for a good like eight years and then slowly went down after season 16. This player also started off on the Knicks. I think I've seen the Knicks as the most common team Bronny's been drafted to or at least he's been there the longest on the Knicks compared to any other team. And then he went to Dallas after about 10 seasons. So he played for two teams his whole career and he was a seven time MVP and a two time champion where he won back to back 14 time all star 10 times first team all NBA. So we got to see how good he was when he actually won those two championships. I actually read that wrong it was actually 2026 and 2037 so he won two championships nearly a decade or more than a decade apart from each other so for the first championship he was probably a second option maybe third but most likely the second option and then for the second championship he was absolutely 100 the man he was the guy for this team seven mvps is obviously a lot and pretty hard to argue against but i think he's also right under the it bar maybe if you think the mvps are enough to get him over then i guess he could be here but it won two championships where he was the best player on the team clear cut so um i think that's kind of hard to put him over again the same thing with the mj stuff we've been dealing with for the past like 10 careers we've done so i like him right under six as well career number 23 Bronny playing 20 years retiring on the pistons as an 85 overall we've had three very similar progression skills in a row so you know starting off kind of slow get up to around that 90 overall area then stays within that 90 overall area for a good you know seven eight years then slowly falls down and he started out in new orleans where he was pretty good he was solid then he kind of blew up in his third season kept getting better and just kind of fluctuated i guess between the 20 between 20 and 25 points per game and then just kind of honestly it looks like he kind of chilled i'm not gonna lie he just kind of got his buckets unless he won championships and we'll, i guess we'll have to see that he was a 16 time all-star seven time first team all nba so this is twice we've seen a brawny who neither won an mvp or an nba championship i see no reason to not put this same exact um the career as the one we had before so right on that a little above t-max scale maybe you could argue 3.2 but i think 3.4 makes a lot of sense career number 24 and this is the first time a player has been injured when they retired he, he played 21 years, ended as an 82 overall, but maybe he was up higher because, you know, he's hurt. So this Bronny got up to superstardom. He was probably as high as around like a 95 overall, stayed like that for a good six to seven years, then slowly went down to being around like a 90, high 80, and then retired after 21 seasons. This Bronny also started out in New Orleans where he was okay, then got better on his four. He took a big jump in his fourth season, then just started balling out, and then he got to the Clippers and started doing his thing, and looks like he averaged a cool 25 points for the most of his Clippers journey, and then went back, or not went back to the Knicks, but he went to the Knicks for his final season. He was a 10-time MVP and a three-time champion. I'm actually kind of surprised he won that many MVPs because his numbers aren't really that crazy. If you really look at them, like, yeah, he has an, a couple nice, you know, 27-point-per-game years. He has a 30 here with New Orleans. Hey, actually, no, you know what? He has a couple high-scoring point-per-game seasons than I thought, and he has some high assists. Uh, seasons as well. So, you know what? I guess it makes sense, but 10 is kind of shocking. One of the championships he actually won on this last season. So, um, I mean, I guess he was a role player, maybe probably the fourth best player on this team. He won one in 2026 where he 
he was also a role player, so also like the fourth best player. And then 2028, which I'll give him the nod as being the best player. He probably was. So he won one ring as being the best player um, on his team. I hate to say it, but I think it's another 5.8 career. He won one ring where he was the best guy. He won two where he was a role player, but the man has 10 MVPs. And again, he has to win He has to win two championships as the best player. Or even if he won one as the best player and then one as like the second or third best player, that would matter. But he won one when he was a role player, like a fourth best player, maybe even fifth. So I think I like him at this 5.8 category yet again. Here's career number 25 where he played 21 seasons, retired on the Spurs as an 81 overall. And he got up to a 95 overall around his sixth season and just slowly kind of went down, but stayed as a superstar for a good portion of his career. Let's see his stats start off in Toronto first two years. You know, he was a rookie, so not really going to give much there. But I mean, picked it up after his third year. Averaged 36 points a game in Toronto one season and then went to Milwaukee and was dropping 30 points a game some years. Wow, these are some pretty good numbers. And he was a nine-time MVP and a four-time NBA champion, 19-time All-Star, and a two-time Defensive Player of the Year. So he won one in 2027. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt being the best player on this team. Uh, uh, you know what? Maybe Scotty Barnes was there. I don't know. That's kind of tough to call. I'm going to say second best player, but very close. 2031, he was obviously the best player, not even close. 2036 was probably the second best player, maybe third, but most likely second. And 2043, you can make the argument maybe he was the best, but probably the second best player. So he really only won one championship where he was legitimately the best player, and then he won two others where he was, you know, the second best player probably, and then one where he was uh, kind of, oh wait, what, how, I, am, I, am I getting my numbers wrong? Yeah, he won one in 2026 where he was like probably like the third or fourth best player. Okay. So I think this career is enough to move him over Isaiah Thomas because he won one as the best player, and then he won two where he was the second best player. So I think that's enough, and also with like the nine MVPs, that probably gives him the two-time defensive player of the year. So I think right at 6.4, probably a good spot. Career number 26, Bronny retiring after 18 seasons on the Knicks. Here's his progression. Uh-oh, this is looking like a bust. He was around like an 85 overall for the good majority of his career. Fluctuated here and there, but he never even got close to being a 90. And I think he played with the Knicks his entire career. Yeah, he literally played with the Knicks his entire career and averaged 20 points a game. So this is looking like glorified six man. Or actually, he had some years who was probably the second best player on this team. So, you know, he may have an argument. He's a three-time NBA champion, an eight-time All-Star, and he never made first team All-NBA. He had a repeat in 2027 and 2028 where he was probably the second best player on this team maybe third but most likely second and then he won in 2031 so all these rings he won he was probably the second or third best player so i think i like him ranked at this 5.2 or 5.4 area he's got three rings where the guy's the second best player on the team or maybe even third i don't know but it's close but i don't think i like him at 5.4 because at least ray allen had some years where he was like the best player on his team and they went into deep playoff runs we can't really prove that with Bronny, obviously but still i think 5.2 feels more fair here's career number 27 Bronny james played 19 years in the league retiring for the thunder as an 84 overall here's his progression really he got around what a 90 overall that's what it looks like yeah so he got around a 90 overall stayed like that for most of his career so never turned into a superstar and he played in okc for his entire career and had a few pretty good seasons this is high scoring team and average in 28 a game so maybe didn't have the overall status play like uh, overall being a superstar but he definitely had some superstar type seasons. and he was a one-time mvp probably that year he averaged 29 and then he was a five-time nba champion jesus christ he had a repeat in 27 and 28 where he was probably the third or fourth best player. He had a repeat in 30 and 31 where he was also the third or fourth best player. And then he won in 2038 where he was all may, maybe second best player. May, I don't know. Maybe. But it's all it's all very close. I really hate to say it, but again, I cannot put him over Isaiah Thomas. He never won a championship where he was the best player on the team. He was always the third or fourth and maybe second on that last one. But I, I got to put him right under IT because he has an MVP. He has five championships. So I got to give him the nine. He was six times first team all NBA. So he's got to be here, but he just couldn't get that ring where he was the best player on the team. So, so far, the most common career has been a 5.8, so right under Isaiah Thomas, which is pretty good, but, you know, we still have plenty of careers to go. Here is career number 28, Bronny retiring on the Rockets, 19 years in the league, retiring in an 88 overall. Okay, he, he might end up being pretty good. Had a bit of a slow start those first four or five years, but definitely picked it up to around probably 93, 90, 90, ugh, sorry, 94 overall, then dropped down to like a 92 and stayed around there, then randomly went back up on his 12th season, back up to 93, 94, so, um, you know, pretty solid career. He started off in Phoenix, where he didn't really do too much toward or actually toward the end he was pretty good and then he went to Denver for one year then he went to Indiana where he went crazy for three years averaging 30 a pop then he went to okay so now he's just averaging 30 every single season then his last year in Atlanta didn't really pick it up like that then he went to Boston where he dropped 34 points a game in his third year in Boston oh my god dude this Bronny was a scorer he was a four-time MVP a two-time champion first team all defense five times and 11 times was first team all NBA he won in 2032 where he was easily the best player he was the man and then he won in 2040 where he was most 
most likely the best player. It'd be hard for him not to be, so I'll give him the nod. So he's got two rings where he's the best player. Got to go over Isaiah Thomas. He's got multiple MVPs. I, I got to give him right at 6.4. That feels like a good spot. Career number 29, Bronny playing 20 years in the league, retiring as an 86 overall. This Bronny also had a bumpy start for his first shot five years, I guess, but quickly got up to being one of the best players in the league at around like a 93, 94 overall, and he stayed like that for a good decade. And then he went down to an 86 by the end of his career after year 20. The man literally played in Phoenix his entire career, had some big 30 point per game season. So this guy was just an absolute bucket and had some great years. He was a seven time MVP and a four time defensive player of the year, a 17 time all star, 12 times first team all NBA, but he was never able to capture that NBA championship. The seven MVPs definitely help, but again, you got to get yourself the ring. Some of these careers have so much potential to be GOAT careers, but like they're always just missing one thing, whether it's they're missing championships or they're missing MVPs or they have the championships, but they won them as the second best player or like they were the fourth best player. I don't think he could pass Kyrie for me right now. Yeah, it'd be, it would be kind of, he just doesn't have a ring. He, he's got to get himself the ring. I know four defensive player of the year. So it's all very impressive stuff, but I have to keep the scale very ring relative. I think this 4.2 I gave, he didn't win a championship, but he had like 10 MVPs. So like, yeah, that's the line I'll draw. If you win 10 MVPs, you can go ahead and be over Kyrie Irving. So, you know, it just kind of is what it is. And we'll have him right at 3.8. It's not like it's not a great career. Just, you know, it is what it is. And for career number 30, Bronny retired after 19 seasons playing for the Nuggets as an 88 overall. Here's the progression bar. So we hit that superstar level for a good three, four years as a 95 overall, then quickly went down a little bit after that 10th season. So he was a very good player for a long time. And for his first four seasons, he played on OKC, didn't really do too much, went to Phoenix for one year. Then he played for Denver for the rest of his career, averaging crazy ass numbers. He was a four-time MVP and a three-time NBA champion. We'll see if those championships actually matter because I'm seeing some early championships where he, when he was in OKC, he wasn't really doing much there. So we'll see how much those really matter. So here's the back-to-back. -back. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt saying he was the second best player, but he could have easily been the third as well. But I'll, I'll give him it being the second. And then in 2033, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt as well saying he was the best player. So he won a championship where he was the best player and then he won one where he was the second best player on both of them. It's very close, but I think four MVPs is enough to get him over Isaiah Thomas. Just barely. So right at a 6.2 should be good. He won three championships, but again, two of them were when he was the second best player and then one he was the best player. So similar to IT where he had two when he was the best player, but you know, it's a little over him. So I'll give him the nod. Career number 31 for Bronny James is here. Just reminding you guys that I'm recording these 30 careers at a time. So I think I actually got a haircut between the time I recorded one through 30 and now 31 through 60. So here we go. All right. So here's his progression bar. I think he kind of peaked at around like a 94, maybe 95 there on that year 7, 8 spot. Then just kind of slowly stayed around being a 90 for most of his career. Then slowly went down after year 18 down to around like an 80. I guess 82 now where he is. So we got drafted by Indiana. Had some really good years for the Pacers here after about like his third season in the league. Started really popping off. Had a bunch of 30 point per game years. So I guess for, wow, he played at Indy for a long ass time. Yeah, he played at Indy pretty much his entire career and was the man pretty much every single season. He was a six time MVP and a two time NBA champion. And for one of those championships, he was the MVP. So he probably was the best player. And then for 2042, we'll look at that. And then in 2042, I'm going to assume he was the best player on this team. 27 a game. I'll give him the nod and um yeah so he won the, he won two championships as the best player has some really good stats he also made first team all defense 11 times and first team all nba 10 times so all right let's see where we, eh, sorry let's see where we rank this i'm gonna be a little rusty for the first few rankings because you know it's been a little while since i've ranked it because i spent so much time actually um, you know getting the careers ready so you know let, let's get into it though so again two championships as the best player he's got six mvps i want to say somewhere in between the 6.8 and 7.2 range is it better than curry you could argue curry only won one championship as the best part of the time of this recording um so i guess i can put him at 7.2 that seems fair again as long as we're in the ballpark of all these careers being ranked then we'll have a good idea of where Bronny james career will be you know where it will be for the majority based off 2k career number 32 is here for Bronny james 21 years in the league retired with the mavericks as an 83 overall and pretty similar to the last career we just saw kind of peaked at around like maybe a 94 if he's lucky he actually looks more like 92 around like that year 11 spot and then slowly went down after year 16 so fairly similar to the last career he was drafted by philly wow i'm surprised philly got such a high pick just two years later but he started popping off in philly after year three then he went to memphis for one year so maybe he didn't get picked up by a team and then he just randomly went to the Grizzlies for a season and then went to indy okay wow just messed up that there he then went to indiana for a good amount of years then went to orlando then okc then san antonio damn he went to like every team but first career 25 5 and 7 that's pretty good he was a two-time nba champion and a five-time mvp one of the rings he won is the mvp so he's probably the best player and then for 2043 we'll check a look at that one. All right, 2043, average 21 a game, probably was the second best player, I would assume. I've actually been doing more of these career sims, and I've noticed that when the years go on, like like later on in, the, in, in their careers, they could 
end up being the best player averaging around like 22 23 a game now again that's kind of out of our control because we don't know the teams because we really only have a base information of what they're averaging so i kind of have to assume that a second best player but it, for a lot of these when he's averaging that 22 23 range he could have very well been the best player but again we just we, we don't have much information we have very broad information so he was a five-time mvp a two-time champion where one of them he was the best player the second one he was probably the second best player so he's probably somewhere in between this it range so anywhere between 5.8 and 6.2 i mean I, we've thrown so many on the 5.8 range and i feel like we've had maybe be, like better careers than maybe could have fallen on 6.2 i'm gonna throw him right on 5.8 it seems fine 6.2 though could also be um debatable five mps is a lot you know i'm changing my mind i'm gonna go 7.2 but i or 6.2 but i feel like i've had similar careers like this with Bronny. And it just, I didn't give him the nod though. So I don't, it, it's very close, but I'm, I'm gonna give him the 6.2 just for the five MVPs. Career number 33, Brian James retiring as a 7 8 overall, 19 years in the league on the Timberwolves. Wow. Oh my God. I don't think he ever got better than an 85. So we got up to around probably an 85, stayed around there for a good four or five years, then slowly went down more. Wow. This is a pretty bad career. For being a top five pick, he was picked fifth overall. So yeah, this is pretty bad for being a top five pick. Let's check out the stats. So he started an OKC and he was okay. For for the first, I, I, I mean, he was a solid role player for a good five years. Then went to Indiana, probably had a big role, was most likely the second or third best player. Then went to Brooklyn, maybe could have been the best player for some of these years, for sure. Maybe this year, 34, 35 was the best player in Brooklyn. Then he went to Phoenix, where he was probably the second best player, and then maybe someone left and he was the best player. And then he went to the Lakers for two years, where he was a role player, and then went to Minnesota for his final year, where he was, you know, he was solid. He was a three time NBA champion, a five time All Star, made first team All NBA two times. That's pretty impressive. So let's see when he won those championships chip see how valuable he was to those teams so he won in 2026 where this isn't even this is like a lamic ring it's like he, he won like being like the eighth guy on the team like <laughs> this is nothing in 2032 he was probably the second or third best player so that's a pretty good championship and then in 2042 he was probably the third or fourth best player so he had a few seasons where he was the number one option on his team they didn't win anything but he you know he put up buckets he did his thing and he was able to win some championships but for the championships he was either just a non-factor or he was just like a really good role player actually one of those he was what like the maybe second or third best player on the team so you know me he, he's He's got some. He's got some nice um, uh, qualifications, resume. That's the word. I think I like him maybe just over T Mac because he did have some good seasons as the best player. He didn't win anything, but he had some good seasons. But they weren't like T Mac caliber seasons. And then he also has some championships to back him up. So maybe you can even put him at three point four. I like three point two though. So we're we're gonna stick with that. All right, career number thirty four. Bronny James retiring on the Heat as an eighty seven overall. That's a high overall to retire at. So this guy's probably uh, gonna be pretty good. Here's the progression chart. Yeah, he got him to around like a ninety six overall stayed like that for a good five six years then went down to probably around like a 94 93 hung around there for a good seven eight years and then i uh, went down to an 87 so pretty good career had a slow start though for sure let's see the numbers he started out in new orleans where he was pretty good for the first three years then turned into the best player by his fourth season and then probably had some nice numbers here and there then went to miami and just went crazy for a good few seasons and then i think he stayed in miami for the rest of his career yeah so he, he had some really nice seasons for miami as the best player he was an eight time mvp a five-time NBA champion, a 16-time All-Star, and made first-team All-NBA 11 times. That's pretty good. So let's see if any of these MVP awards correlate with the champion spots. So let's see. He won in 2027, 2029, 2031. So he did He did a 4P. Wow. He almost did a 6P if he would have won in 2028. So he won two of these championships where he was the MVP. So let's see if these other rings he won, which is 2027, 2029, and 2030. He was actually the best player on the team. He probably was. All right. So for 2027, okay, he was probably the second best player. 2029. See, this is one where maybe he was the best player, but I'm I'm gonna give him i'm gonna say benefit of doubt and give him second best player on the team and then 2030 again also could possibly be the best player on the team but i'm just gonna i'm going with i'm staying consistent with what i've been doing for the first 30 careers that we did so i'm gonna say he was the second best player he could have been the best he for sure could have been but i'm gonna leave it as being the second best so he won two championships as the best player and three championships as the second best player sounds very familiar don't you think that sounds like a kobe bryant career so and he has eight mvps as well so probably could flow in between this 8.4 and 8.2 section i probably like him to be uh i'll give him i'll give him the benefit of that i feel like we've had so many like far more like impressive careers though like these 8.8 8.6 careers are like crazy so i think i like it at 8.2 could be 8.4 but I i'm gonna stick with um i'm gonna stick with 8.2 career number 35 is here Bronny james retiring after 19 seasons a 79 overall on the jazz and another pretty rough career that's two out of three we've had some rough ones he never got better than around maybe like an 80 
85, 86, maybe 87, but really never got that good. Was probably an all-star for a good few seasons, but maybe let's see if he put up the numbers to support uh, maybe being a, you know, star, superstar level kind of player. Because you could still be an 87 overall, but put up like 26, 27 a game with good tendencies. All right, so we got drafted by the Grizzlies, and um, his second year played really well. He's probably the second best player on the team for a little while, then moved to the to the best player on the team for Memphis and uh, just put up some solid numbers for a long time. Well, Memphis went to Detroit and just kind of, I guess, kind of flailed out a little bit there. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. But he was a one-time NBA champion, a three-time All-Star, and was most improved player twice. That, that is really weird. Winning most improved player twice is insane. That, that's actually crazy. So he won that championship in 2042, and he was probably like the fourth or fifth best player. So he was close to, not, not a, he was a factor to the team, but I'm saying like, you know, as far as moving up the scale on the Bronny career scale, probably isn't going to do too much for him, but it is a ring at the end of the day. I don't think that championship puts him over T-Mac as well. He, I think he only made three all-star teams. Yeah, he was a three-time all-star, and he won two of them where he wasn't even really that good in 2040 and 2041, or at least later on in his career. So... I think I like him maybe just like 2.4, 2.6 in this area. So I'll give him the nod. I think the ring gives him a little like a little, a little boost. But, you know, we'll leave him right at 2.6. The, the ring is carrying for sure. But again, we are using some common sense. You know what I mean? Because again, this is a ring skill and he has more rings than Jamal Crawford, T-Mac. You know what I mean? So, but again, we have to use some common sense here and there. Career number 36, Bronny James retiring injured. We've only seen this a few times. He had a stomach virus and he was out for the season. That's pretty rough, dude. But I'm um, 20 years, 21 years in the league. Sorry, retiring at an 80 overall and he was pretty good for a long time got up to probably around a 94 95 overall for a good six seven years at that nine year spot and then just slowly went down to 94 so had a not really slow actually he kind of started off really good his second year in the league he was an 85 overall by that point that's pretty good and look at that after his first year in utah he was already the best player had some 30 point per game seasons he was going insane oh my god then he went to golden state kind of chilled out a little bit was probably the second best player on the team then went to okc was also probably the second best player and then retired in the end as the second best player maybe third best player and he was a nine-time mvp oh my god whoa how many years did he win in a row nine zero one two four okay so he missed some years but jesus christ he literally owned the 2030s as far as being the best player in the league for such a long time and he won two defensive player of the year awards so that's very impressive but he was never able to cap off the nba championship so a career like this is really good but it's going to hurt him because he was just never able to capture that championship because on our Bronny career scale it's very ring dependent so he's gonna take a shot for sure but you know he'll still be very good i feel like we had a similar career where this one was like a 10 time mvp and i put him just over Kyrie. so i think i'm gonna do the same thing again but this one is really good though this is a very impressive career and especially numbers he put up in the regular season so it's a tough call again it is very rank dependent it's unfortunate but you know i'll, I'll put him right at 4.2 i know you're saying wow winning nine mvps and owning an entire decade being the best player in the world then you're <laughs> only at 4.2 well it is what it is very rank dependent scale you know we just got to keep it consistent though as as much as we can and i also could just be wrong on what this dot was again i record these 30 at a time and i recorded those other ones literally almost a week ago so you know <laughs> it's uh it's tough here's career number 37 Bronny james retiring on the bucks as an 81 overall and another pretty rough career never really got better than around a 90 maybe just under a 90 overall so again we've had some rough careers here on this 10 stretch and he was drafted by the suns okay i'm shocked they actually had a high pick but okay and he started off he, he popped off really just at the beginning of his career stayed on phoenix for a while as the best player maybe second best player here and there but for the most part was the best player then he went to minnesota was just putting up buckets doing his thing then slowed down in milwaukee and he was a two-time nba champion and a 15-time all-star making first team all defense five times first team all nba four times so let's see when he won those championships how viable he was to those rings so he won in 2038 which probably second best player and 23.6 would have been close but i'm gonna say 20.4 points per game probably the second best player and then he won in 2044 which is he's probably the fourth of his fifth best player maybe third if he's lucky but probably third or fourth or sorry fourth or fifth i think this career floats around the t-mac jamal crawford area maybe just right in this circle because there was no point in the league where he was mentioned as like even being close to a top 10 player because he never even got to a 90 overall but he had some good seasons he also was able to win a championship as the second best player on a team so that helps his case. So maybe just an inch over T Mac might be, or maybe just an inch below. So you can really debate it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the nod right over T Mac and, and, and call that fair. All right, career number 38, Bronny James retiring on the Raptors as an 85 overall. So probably gonna be pretty good. Here's the progression chart. Had a really slow start for a good four or five seasons. Eventually.
eventually was able to get up to around like a 94 overall, then slowed down back down to around a 92. Stayed like that for a good five, six years, and then slowly went down to an 85. So not bad. I mean, better compared to some of these other careers we've seen. He was drafted by the Suns to start a pop. We've, we've had a lot of careers here between 30 and 40 where he just starts popping off like the moment he gets into the league. So he did his thing if Phoenix was the best player on Phoenix for a while. Oh my God, put up some crazy ass numbers. Then went to Washington, was probably the best player there as well. And then he went to Toronto, slowed down a little bit. Probably the second best player, maybe third here in this last year in Toronto. And he was a seven time MVP, a 14 time All Star, made first team All NBA 12 times, made first team All Defense 10 times, but again, was never able to capture that NBA championship. So that is going to hurt him again, like we had in the, uh, what, just a few careers ago. So again, we're splitting hairs here. This career, I believe, was a nine time MVP. This one was a 10 time MVP. This one was a seven time MVP. So I got to give him the nod and say and put him right under Kyrie. Again, we're splitting hairs here. I could put him at 4.2, sure, but we're going to put him right at 3.8. All right, career number 39, Bronny James retiring on the Nuggets. 20 years in the league, 86 overall, pretty good. Oh my God, he was a 97 overall, probably for a good five. Five, six years that slowly went down but had a slow start but i mean listen if you're gonna get up to that superstar of being one of the best players in the league then probably the best player in the league after about 10 years he was probably the best player in the league for a good five six years and he was drafted by new orleans had a bit of a slow start but he was a rookie so i mean you know it is what it is and then quickly turned into their best player has some really good years average in 30 and 10 in 2033 he stayed in new orleans for a long ass time then he went to indiana for the last four years of his career actually then he went to denver for his final year and then randomly averaged 24 a game when he was 39 years old so you know good for him he was a nine time mvp and a five time nba championship but i can already see for three of those championships he maybe wasn't the best player because he won three of those early on in his career. So we'll have to see when those actually happen. But for two of those, he won while he was the MVP. So that we could have another Kobe S type career. We'll see. So he won in 2025 where he was probably a role player. They won back to back. So again, he was probably again the third or fourth or fifth best player. Just somewhere in that area. Then he won in 2028 where I'm going to say he was the second best player. It's possible he was the best, but I'm going to go ahead and say he was the second best player. And then he obviously won two of them where he was the clear cut best player. Was a two time MVP in those spots. But again, he was a nine time MVP. So, you know, so this career is obviously in that Kobe range, either right under Kobe or right over Kobe, because Kobe won two championships as the, as the best player and won three as the second best player. This guy won two championships as the best player and then won three, where two of them, he was like, you know, a role player, like maybe third or fifth best player, not really role player, but you get what I mean. And then he won one of them where he was the second best player. So it's very close, but he also did win nine MVPs. And I think that is just enough to get him over the hump of being better than Kobe. So I think I like him right at 8.2. That fits fine. Here is career number 40. Bronny James, nice voice crack. Bronny James retiring on the Lakers as an 83 overall at 40 years old. And this is a pretty solid career. Never really got better to around maybe like a 93 overall. Stayed like that for a good while. Then slowly went down around his year 19 and then went down to an 83 overall. So not bad. Had a bit of a slow start there for the first three or four years, but picked it up on that fourth year stretch. And he was drafted by the Magic. You know, had some good years there. Was the best player there for a little bit. Actually for a lot of it. He was there for a while. Then he went to Indiana for a good four years. He was probably the second best player. Made the best player the first year he got there. Maybe was the best. We don't know. Again, we don't have much information. We can only really go off the numbers. And then he went to Miami where he was probably the best player averaging 30 a game. I would say so. And then he went to the Lakers and, um, you know, he was pretty good for a while as the best player. Then maybe went down to the second best player on his last three seasons. And he was a one-time MVP and a seven-time MVP. NBA champion. So we'll see when he got those rings, how viable he was to those teams and see if he was the best option or the second best um, option. But it looked like for a lot of those years, he was either the best player on his team or the second best. So this ended up working out really good for him. So he had a three-peat right here in 2027, 2028, and 2029. Um, I mean, for this year, he's probably the second or third best player, probably third best player. And then for these two years, it's very hard to judge. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he was the best player here and then maybe the second best player here. He could have very well been the best player, but I feel like I've had some years where I've said he was the second best player and he averaged like 25. So I'm going to try to be as consistent as I can. And I'm just going to say he was the second best player here. I know it's a difference of 0.9 points or 1.1 points, whatever it may be. But again, you know, I'm trying my best to stay consistent. Then he won in 2031 where he was probably the best player. Then he won in 2034, which man, it's really tough. It really is tough. I'm going to say second best player, but I don't feel good about it. Then he won in 2041 where he was probably the best player. Then he won in 2042 where he was probably the best player. Very close, but Probably. All right, so I believe I'm getting this right. So four times he was the best player on his team to win a championship. Two times he was the second best player, and the third and the seventh time he was like a 
third or fourth best player on his team. So again, we're going very ring dependent. It helps out a lot when you win that many championships as the number one option. But he did only win one MVP. So I either got him at 8.2 or 8.4. It, it's a close one. Just because, again, we are so ring dependent, I am going to put him at 8.4. It's very close. But again, the rings carry a lot more than the MVPs do. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Here we go, but career number 41, retiring as an 84 overall, playing 20 years in the league and retiring on the Lakers. So for his first three seasons, he didn't get any better, like, at all. And then he got up, quickly spiked up to around, like, a 93 overall by his eighth season. So very slow start, possibly the slowest start we've seen from a player when they actually eventually get up to a 93 or in, in, at least into the 90 range. But, you know, a pretty solid career overall as far as overall wise. And this man played with the Knicks his entire career. Yeah, the whole thing, <laughs> except for the Lakers for the last season. So, um, yeah, had some really good years for most of these years, was the best player on the team, had some 30 point per game years as well. So was a very good player for a very long time. And he was a four time MVP and an NBA champion. Probably was the best player on the team, but we will double check that. He was first team all NBA eight times. I know I could also use the first team all NBAs to also see if he was the best player on the team. So maybe the guy averaged like 22 a game, but was first team all NBA. But also there could have been two players to make first team all NBA that were on the same team. So he could still be on that and be the second best player on the team. So again, we have very broad stats to look at. Just reminding you guys again, because again, I know I'm going to get comments about that and be like, oh, but this guy made first team all NBA and you know, maybe he only averaged 22 a game, but he was the best part of the team. But again, we don't really know that information. So I have to make a lot of inferences and just, you know, uh, you know, logical guesses on if he was the best player or not. Anyway, he won a championship in 2036 and he was probably the best player. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because, you know, he was on this team for so long and had so many great years. So I'm going to assume he was the best player. So I'll give it to him. So he won a championship as the best player was a four time MVP. And I think those four MVPs are more valuable than Ray Allen's, um, second ring, I guess, or maybe even, not both of them, because the one he won as, like, the third or fourth best player, whatever you want to debate it, so, I mean, I guess 5.4 would be a good spot for this career, because it is only one championship, but again, he was so good for so long, and he won that ring as the best player, so I think I like right around 5.4, even 5.2 is not bad, but at least above Ray Allen, so, you know what, maybe 5.2, it is really only one championship, but again, I think it's enough to eclipse him being the best player to win a, um, win a ring, you get the point, so, 5.2, and here is career number 42, he played 20 years to leave retiring as an 85 overall so he's probably gonna be pretty good had a bit of a slow start like the last career but still i mean he got up to around 95 probably 94 95 slowly went down and probably chilled at around 93 overall after that 10 season for a good six years then went down to an 85 overall and he was drafted by portland and was good off the jump he may have been like an 80 overall but he was putting up the numbers probably based off his tendencies but he was really good. Wow. Oh, my God. He put up some crazy-ass numbers for Portland. Yeah, these are some wild-ass numbers. Then he went to Utah, put up some good numbers as well. But it looks like for his entire career, it looks like he was the best player outside of these first two years. And he was a four-time NBA champion and a nine-time MVP. If we could just go ahead and correlate these. So, 2030, he was the MVP and the NBA champion. 2036, he was the MVP and the NBA champion. He was not an MVP in 2040 or 2042. So, we'll see if he was the best player. He probably was. All right. So, here's 2040. Yeah, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt on that one. And then in 2040. 42 obviously was also the best player on the team so wow won four championships as the best player on the team and then also i believe eight mvps sorry nine mvps this is a pretty good resume i like this resume to be either at 8.4 8.6 nine mvps is a lot of mvps so maybe i can give him the 8.6 it does feel better because again kobe won you could argue if you won one of those ones with Shaq as the best player but he guaranteed won two of them as the best player and Bronny james won four of them as the best player along with nine mvps so i think i like him to be at 8.6 that just feels more right so i'm gonna go with 8.6 all right so this Bronny james in his 43rd nba career simulation he played 13 seasons and retired as a 69 overall so this is gonna be uh this is gonna be rough you know what it's actually not that bad because he he got up to around like a 92 overall, maybe even like a 93. And then he just fell off a cliff by his 10th season. Something happened, maybe an injury, I don't know, but he fell off a cliff. And here's the stats. He was drafted by the Thunder and he had some, whoa, he had some good, he had some great seasons. This is looking like a T-Mac ass career. We will, this, this could be T-Mac level. Not, I, I was expecting complete bust because 13 seasons, that's not really a lot. For, you know, this skill that we have, but I mean, this is looking like a T-Mac ass career. He was a three-time MVP and a one-time NBA champion. He won the MVP and the champion at the same time, so this is actually over T-Mac. Wow. I'm actually shocked because just looking at seeing a 13-year career and retiring at 69, you probably think, okay, that's probably a bust, 
but wow, you know what? I may have been wrong. He won that championship averaging 31 a game. Obviously, we don't have playoff stats. I obviously can't do nothing about that, but for the regular season, he averaged 31 and a half, so we can imagine the playoffs even either, you know, went up or he stayed stagnant, but I mean, yeah, he, he was the man. It was a very short career, but he definitely made the most of it, you know, with what, you know, having that drop off 10 years into his career, so I think I like him right over Kyrie. Even 4.4 is about it. He did win three MVPs and won a championship as the best player, and I think these two dots right here are him not winning a championship and getting like, um, like what, seven or nine MVPs, whatever it may be, so... I think I like it at 4.4. Our first 4.4 the video. Let's lock it in. Here is career number 44. Bronny James retiring after 19 years in the league. That's an 86 overall. And he had a weird bumpy start. He was at an 80. Went up to around like an 82, 83. Then just plummeted down to like a 77. And then weirdly went back up so maybe he had like an injury or something like that he probably got hurt for the season maybe i don't know but was you know kind of chilling around like a 94 95 throughout most of his career then went slowly down to 96 by the time he retired all right not bad and he was drafted by the spurs somehow wasn't taken on his team option went to houston then went back to san antonio where he became the best player on the team and it's some so i guess maybe he got hurt after like by the end of his second season he must have got a huge injury and the spurs said all right we're done with you bro and we're just, they thought it was going to be over and then they somehow were able to convince him to come back that is pretty insane but then he ended up going to the clippers where he had some huge years averaging 34 a game in 2034 um and looks like he was the best player for most of his teams outside of these last five six years but looks like he was the best player on his team after that little rough start there in san antonio and houston and he was a six-time mvp and a one-time champion so we'll see when he won that championship 11 time all defense 11 time first team all nba so some really good accolades we'll see when he won that championship so he won it in 2029 which he was most likely the best player he was the best player so um this looks like a little better than the career we just saw because he has the longevity on his side and then also was able to win a championship as the best player and has some really good statistical seasons so this is a pretty good career so we just had that dot at a 4.4 i think this one being at a 4.6 makes perfect sense it's literally just the career we had before just with more longevity he just played longer in the league he didn't just fall off a cliff randomly so um yeah i like it 4.6 you can make an argument for, for, for eh, sorry for 4.8 but i'm gonna give him 4.6 okay career number 45 and Bronny james retiring after 11 years in the league this could potentially be our worst career yet but we'll see maybe he actually had a really nice four-year stretch where he won a championship was the mvp you never know look at that look he at least got up to around like an 87 overall maybe even closer to a 90 than i think for a good five years then he just fell off a cliff after a year eight and went down and retired in the league so yeah this is uh this is pretty rough but let's see the numbers he put up had a really good rookie season in philly then quickly was moved to the clippers and then went back to philly and just lit it up as the best player on the team could be stat padding we'll see if he won some championships you never know but um went to sacramento and then just i don't know what the hell happened what the hell happened in sacramento he was a one-time all-star made first team all nba one time and was first team all rookie this is a rough career bro this is really bad he has some nice peak years but he just doesn't have the longevity that jamal crawford had so i think this may be our first career under two you can make the argument for just being right over Jamal Carver because he had some years where he was better than him overall, where he averaged like 25, 26 points a game in Philly, but he just didn't have the longevity, and those years didn't really lament anything. If you put Jamal Carver on his own team as the best player, he could probably give you 25 a game, but that was just never the case for him. So I think you got to put him right under Jamal Crawford. I think right at 1.8 seems fair. So, so far, that is the worst career we've had of Bronny James's 100 careers, man. That, that, that was a rough one. Career number 46, he played 21 years in a league, retiring as an 83 overall and he got good really quick by his third season he was pretty much a 90 then just kind of chilled around like a 92 93 for most of his career then dropped down to um you know around the low 80s by his 18 19 season let's check out the stats he played in new orleans his entire career averaging 22 5 and 7 he played in phoenix for his last season but has some really nice numbers as potentially the best player on the team i, I would argue for for a good amount of these he was probably the best player but we'll see what awards he has and he was a two-time mvp and a two-time nba champion the mvps do not correlate with the nba championships so we'll see if he was actually the number one option on these teams um so yeah let's go ahead and see that so he won in 2030 i'll give him that he was probably the best player and then he won in 2035 and i have to be consistent there is a good chance he was the best player on this team but i have to be consistent how i've been throughout the first 40 
years of the of these careers. So I'm going to say he was the second best player. So one ring as the best player, one ring as the second best player. So his stats don't blow me away, but they were very solid for a long time. Um, you know, he's got the two rings. One is the best player, one is the second best player, and he was a two-time MVP. So I think I had far more impressive careers here at the 5.8 range. So I think right at 5.6 is a good spot. You could maybe debate putting him on the 5.8 ladder, but I think I've already established that. I feel like there were some crazy ass 5.8 careers. So I think 5.6 is fair. Career number 47 is here. He played 19 years in the league, retiring on the Bucks as an 85 overall. And he had a quick start, jumping right up to like around like an 86, 87 by his second season in the league, then quickly going up to around a 90, what, 92, 93 by his fifth season, then kind of stayed around there for a little bit, going down to a 90, and just kind of being on cruise control for a good, you know, seven, eight years. And he was drafted by the Spurs and definitely has the numbers to show for. He may have not reached that, you know, superstar overall around like a 95 96 but he is showing out averaging double doubles every single season here for the san antonio spurs so yeah has some great years for the spurs then went to milwaukee had some solid years probably as a second option then went to orlando as a second option as well so he looks like he was our the best player the second best player throughout most of his career and he was a three-time mvp he went back to back to back and a three-time champion almost at the three peat almost at a four peat actually if he would have won in 2034 but he did a he, he went back to back so in 2033 this is a very close one jesus christ I may want to, oh, gee, that is so close. He probably was the best player, but I, I got to stay consistent with what I've been saying. He, man, that's a tough one, bro. I I'll give him it. I, I really don't want to give him it, but I I'm going to give him it. And then he won in 2035. I'm not giving him that second best player in 2036. I'm not giving him that at one either. So he was the second best player for two of these. Arguably could have been... Um, which I'm he could have been the second best player here, but I'm gonna give him that one and say he was the best player So one he won as the best player two he won as the second best player I think this career is right between 5.8 and 6.2 if I could put it down at 6 I would but I think I like it right It's a it's a tough one because again He has more rings than IT and IT won two championships as the best player Um, but he has three MVPs and he won one as the best player and then he won two well, ah, It's really debatable though. I don't I, I it's not as much as a guarantee So I'm gonna put it at 5.8. Do I love putting it at 5.8? No Oh, but it's just it's just the feeling I have it's right in this area though All right, here's career number 48 He played 21 years in the league retiring as a 79 overall and he had a bit of a slow start there for his first five six season They quickly amped it up to around a seventh eighth season getting to around maybe like a 92 93 overall Had a really nice career looks like overall was and he was drafted by the Raptors where season one He just started popping off maybe was the best player probably not probably Scotty Barnes was there being the best player But I mean he's putting up the numbers. see that's one thing we can't really account for he could put up these numbers and be like a 90 overall but they're good May as well have been someone on this team who was probably like a 95 overall and you know He was putting on maybe not as good numbers, but again, he was the better player on the team So we don't know we're using as much information as we can and wow He went to oh my god in Toronto. He started lighting it up. Oh my god Then he went to Milwaukee started lining it up and going crazy. Oh my dude He has some crazy ass years here and he was a seven-time MVP and a one-time NBA champion Looks like he won that ring a little bit late So we'll see when that actually mattered, but he was a top player in this league for a long ass time statistically Overall wise maybe may have cut to be like a top five top ten player but you know still really good so he won in 2043 that's second best player for sure so i mean again it very possible could have been the best player but again based off consistency we're gonna make him the second best player on this team so he was a very good player for a long time had some insane ass statistical seasons and was not able to win that championship until the end where he got it as the second best player and he has a lot of mvp so i think i like this in but somewhere around here in the 5.4 area we're gonna put him right at 5.4 because again you know we have to use some common sense the man was probably one of the best players in the league for a long well, i mean or like one of the top five players in the league for a long ass time so i'm gonna put him right in the 5.4 spot career number 49 Bronny james with Tiring on the Pelicans after playing 19 seasons as an 87 overall and another slow star first three years didn't really get any better than by that fifth sixth season he really only got it to around the 90s so you know he stayed really good for a long ass time but never turned into a superstar at least overall wise maybe statistically he played like it but just from the overall didn't really do much and he was drafted by the Suns had some really good numbers for a long time looked like the second option for the first four years then turned into the number one option maybe someone left there he just got better well he did get better playing in Phoenix for a while and then went to the Knicks where he was probably the number one option as well then went in went to Indiana where he was also number one option maybe number two for a few of these years maybe this year he's number one option I don't know it's all very close and he was a one-time MVP oh my god he won a championship he was a one-time MVP that's it he just won one MVP so he's got the longevity over at T-Mac and but his stats just aren't as impressive in those peak years as T-Macs were but again 
I think I'm going to value the longevity and winning an MVP. That also has to go into it. So I think right at a 3.2 or 3.4, either one. But I'm going to put him right at 3.2. It's not a bad career, but, you know, he, he just wasn't able to capture a championship. And the numbers aren't really that mind-blowing. He had some really nice years, but just nothing... T-Mac level, peak T-Mac level type shit. You know what I mean? And here is career number 50 for Bronny James. 19 years in the league, retiring as an 87 overall on the Thunder. Another very slow start again for the first three years, not really getting up there that much. Then quickly got up to around like a 93, 94 overall by year five. And then kind of slowed down to around like a 92, 93 overall for a good five, six years. And then really went back up by year 14 and went back down. So very consistent after year five. All right, so we had kind of a slow start as we said by the overall, but then he just started going insane these numbers are ridiculous look how many 30 point per game years he had i think he played for the thunder his entire career but he had a lot of very good seasons for the thunder and he was a five-time champion and a seven-time mvp we'll see when he won those rings because i think for 2027 to 2028 he wasn't really much of a roles but for those other three he was probably the best uh the best player 2031 yep he was the best player 2034 and most likely 2037 he was the best player he just didn't win an mvp so yeah these two rings i mean this one means a little more he won he averaged 18 a game so he's probably like the third best player on the team but for this one i mean he was a role player maybe fourth or fifth best player he was solid but nothing crazy and then for 2034 i don't know how he didn't win mvp this year but he was obviously the best player my bad it was actually this year that he didn't win the mvp and they won the championship still the best player on the team but he didn't win mvp all right so he's got three championships where he was the man no doubt two of them where you know he was a very solid player for one of them the other one he didn't really matter and he was a seven time mvp with some really good statistics like some really good stats do i think it's over kobe no but i think it's pretty damn close those numbers are really good and seven mvps a lot so i think right at 7.8 is a fair number and that means we're now officially halfway through this video of simulating Bronny James's NBA career 100 times. Whether you've been skipping around this video to watch it or watching it all the way through, I appreciate it so much because, again, this is taking a lot of time to put together, as you guys obviously can tell. So I appreciate everything. Let's get on to these next 50 careers so we can have our Bronny NBA career scale completely finished and looking perfect. So let's get into it, man. If you're this far, bro, you could drop a like on the video by now or at least subscribe if you're not already. That'd be really appreciated. All right, so let's get into the next 50. Here is career number 51. Bronny playing 20 years in the league, retiring as a 84 overall in the Lakers and he had a pretty quick start by year three was already up to a 90 overall then got up to around like a 94 overall around that area then stayed stagnant for like a good five six years at like a 92 and then slowly went down to 84 so a pretty consistent overall for the overall of his career very confusing words there but you get the point he was drafted by New Orleans had you know two solid years then probably turned into the best player around year four year five for New Orleans and had some pretty good years then he went to Denver probably the best player there as well then he went to Atlanta for a few years so let's see I guess what his accolades are and then he closed it out in uh for the lakers he was an eight-time mvp and a three-time nba champion and it looks like for one of them he was the mvp and won the nba champion so we just got to see how much of a role he was for the other two championships he won which was 2041 and 2045 all right so for 2041 listen there again there is a small chance he could have been the best player but we got to stay consistent i'm gonna say he was the second best player and then for 2045 he was probably the third or fourth best player on this team so he never won a championship as the best player but he won one as the second best player has eight mvps so, and then he also won another championship where he was kind of like a role player. So he, he could even be oh, on the Ray Allen tier, honestly. I was thinking about putting him just over Kyrie, but really, he has two rings, and they're both very similar to how Ray Allen got his ring. So I would say maybe like 5.4, maybe even 5.6. 5.6 wouldn't be too much of a stretch. I'm going to go 5.6. Maybe 5.4 feels more right, but I mean, listen, he's a pretty solid career. Career number 52 is here. He retired on the Celtics as an 86 overall after playing 20 seasons. And again, another career with a quick start, got up to a 90 overall around year three, and then just kind of stayed consistent around that for the next decade and a half. So, um, yeah, pretty good. And his career started in Toronto, and, you know, maybe he wasn't a 90 overall yet, but he was still playing well right off the jump. And then by year three, he was probably the best player on the team. Had some pretty crazy years in Toronto, averaging 30 points a game. Then went to Brooklyn for a season, then went to Boston and averaged 35 points a game in 2035. Jesus, oh my, oh my, oh my God, he had some... By 2043, he was still averaging 30 points a game. That is pretty insane. He had some crazy ass years in Boston. He was a seven time MVP and a four time NBA champion. So we'll see where he was actually the best player on those teams. So for one of them, he had the MVP and the NBA championship at 2035. So let's see where those other ones rank. So in 2029, most likely the best player, 27 points a game. You got to give him that. 2033, it's close, but I'll give him the best player um, for, for Brooklyn. Wow, he actually he went to Brooklyn one season and just won a championship. That's so random. And then in 2039, obviously, best player on the team. 
team. It's not even a debate. So the man has four championships as the best player, and he has seven MVPs. So that's got to be over Kobe for sure. It's either between 8.2 and 8.4. I like 8.4 a little bit just because his stats are so overwhelming. The amount of 30-point-per-game seasons he had, like, just... He, he just has the regular season numbers going for him. So, I mean, honestly, you could even argue 8.6 if you wanted to because he won all those championships as the best player on his team. Man, that's really, that is really close. But I, I'm going to say, I'm going to go 8.4. It's close, though. Here we have career number 53 where Bronny retired after 19 seasons on the Nuggets. Same sort of career again. All very similar. He started off pretty hot after year three, got up to a 90 overall, and then just kind of stayed stagnant around that 92, 93 overall area for a good decade. So, you know, very similar career for these past three just it's been different accolades so we started off in okc where he was drafted had some solid years first four years were solid and then you know he was probably the best player on this uh, uh by, by 2029 and then he went to memphis and just lit it up for a good four years and then he went to denver had some chill years and then yeah, i guess he closed out his career in denver yep okay and he was a four-time mvp and a six-time nba champion let's see if any of them correlate so i think it's only 20 uh, uh 2029 was the only time he was the mvp and the nba champion so we have to check all those other ranks and see if he was the best player on those teams so 2028 no not gonna give him that one <laughs> he averaged 20 a game probably the second best player maybe even third but um okay so 2030 again that's really close because the man just won the mvp the year before but again i have to go off what i've been doing this entire video so i'm gonna say second best player and then for 2031 also second best player and then for 2035 that is a very close one jesus christ that i, I will i'm gonna oh, man that's that is a tough call I, i'm gonna give him being the uh, I don't even know if I want to do that. Oh my god, that's so close. He, okay, you know what? I'll give him it. I'll give him the best player on this team, and then he won in 2037, which second best player, I gotta say that. Uh, second or third best player, probably second. So he won two championships where he was the best player, but won six championships overall, and he was probably either the second or third best player in all those other rings, and then he was a four-time MVP. In my opinion, that does eclipse Kobe, because Kobe, again, you could say won two championships as the best player, then he won three as the second best player, obviously, not the third. So this one's an 8.2 or an 8.4. I actually kind of like it being an 8.4, but I don't think it, it's better than the career we just saw before. I don't think it's better than that one, but again, this one just has more rings where he was a, um, you know, second or third option. So I'm going to put it at 8.2. Um, yeah, I'm cool with that. Here is career number 54. Bronny James retiring on the Bucks after 20 seasons as an 80 overall. And this is a bit of an ugly career. Never got over a 90 overall. Around year six and seven, got to probably around like an 88, 87 range, but never turned into a, you know, close to being a superstar. Probably just a very good all star for a long time. And here are his stats drafted by the Thunder with the third pick in the draft. Yeah, played there for what a good five years five years and then he went to charlotte for one year randomly then went to dallas for one year randomly then went to memphis then detroit okay this dude was flying all around everywhere with just you know some stuff this is a these are some jamal crawford ass numbers and he was a one-time nba champion and a eight-time all-star won six man of the year in 2029 so yeah this is looking like a jamal crawford ass career let's see when he won that ring in 2028 how viable that really is so in 2028 he averaged 13 a game so he was probably like what like maybe like fifth best player on the team maybe if he's lucky the longevity is for sure on par with jamal crawford and he also has the championship ring i don't think it's over t mac though because he never even won an mvp or he never really came close to being one of the best players in the league never even got to a 90 overall so either i'm feeling 2.4 just kind of being generous for that championship ring but i mean really could put him at 2.2 but I'll, I'll give him the 2.4 it's very close though we have another injury retirement brian chase retiring after 20 seasons in the league as a 79 overall on the rockets and he hit a pretty high peak he got up to around like a 90 what 94 95 for a good five six years then went down to around a 93 so you know pretty consistent had a pretty quick start too by year three was already close to a 90 overall so he got up there quick and he was drafted by new orleans played there for i think like what like 15 years then he went to the clippers and then he retired in houston you know these are some solid numbers had a couple 30 point per game seasons on the clippers and okay just one of them but some very high scoring seasons for sure for uh, throughout most of his career and he was a six time mvp and an eight time champion holy shit okay we have to look over these so do any of the mvps in the nba championships um correspond with each other i don't know um 2029 he was mvp okay so that's one um he won mvp in 2033 he didn't win the championship there he didn't win in 2038 he didn't win in 2039 either he didn't win in 2040 and he won in 2042 so two of these championships he was clear cut the best player because he won mvp as for 2027 and 2028 probably the second or third best player for this one second this one could be second, but we'll say third. And then he went and had a four peat in 2034, five, six, and seven. And I get, I'm going to say for, uh, that's really close. He was probably the best player here. I guess I should use some common sense here. You know what? 
I will give him the benefit of the doubt. I will use some common sense here and say he was the best player for all four of these teams. So he four-peated as the best player. That is insanely impressive. This career may not feel as overwhelming as some of the 8.8s that we had, but still, he won six championships as the best player, won two more to where he was the second or third option, and was a six-time MVP. I know one of these, these 8.8s, he was like a nine-time defensive player of the year, but he wasn't able to have the championships to stack up. But again, this scale is very ring-based. So for this one, this is our best career so far based off this scale, and I'm just going to give him the notch over Michael Jordan at a 9.2. He has the same amount of rings, won them all as the best player, won two more than Michael Jordan, and captured six MVPs, and has solid numbers throughout his entire career. So I have to give him the nod at a 9.2. Our best career so far based off this scale. Career number 56, Bronny James retiring after 19 years on the Pistons as an 82 overall. And he had kind of a slow start, but by year four, he got up to a 90, and then by year eight, just had a weird ass dip probably was out for the season with an injury i'm assuming because he dropped all the way down to like a 75 and then he kind of got back up and stayed toward around may maybe just hitting a 90 overall for the good portion rest of his career and he was drafted by philly had a few solid years as a rookie then finally by probably his fourth or fifth season emerges the best player on the team i know they had him beat but look at these averages bro 35 points a game then this was the year he got hurt he went to milwaukee and got hurt then went back to philly at, or maybe he got hurt by the end of the philly season i'm not sure but you know it is what it is but he has some crazy ass numbers for philly has multiple 30 point per game seasons seasons and then kind of slowed down by 2040 and then went to Detroit for a few years as the second best player on his team maybe third I don't know you know it is what it is he only won one MVP and was a two-time champion dude these numbers are pretty insane compared to most of the guys we've most of the Bronny we've seen at multiple 30 point per game years and especially when the the uh the league gets so watered down after like a decade you would think Bronny would just sneak up all those MVPs but he only got one that's insane and he won a ring in 2037 obviously is the best player and then he won in 2041 probably second or third best player sorry it was actually 2042 but very similar stats but you know it, it is what it is still second or third best player man i don't know how to feel about this career because he, i like it's so he has so much good numbers but he just doesn't have the mvps that i thought he was going to win but he has the numbers to back it up i can't put him over it i really want to because he has the numbers he just doesn't have the mvps to really take it over because i know a lot of these 5.8s these guys had like six or seven mvps and they didn't have two championships as the best player so i didn't i didn't move him over the hump so i have to be consistent so I, I think either 5.8 or 5.6 is really fair here. I think I'm going to give him 5.8 just because those numbers are very overwhelming. So, it, it, you know, it's only right. But again, the MVP is only having one is very shocking. All right, career number 57. Nice voice crack there. And Bronny James retiring on the Mavericks. 19 years in the league as an 84 overall. And it looks like he just barely got over a 90 overall for a good, you know, half a decade or even full decade. Nah, then really like, you know, six, seven years. And then he kind of slowly went down. So never really hit that peak as a true superstar, but was a very solid player and probably multiple time all-star for a long time he was drafted by utah so nice little duo there with donovan mitchell and brawny and then he went to cleveland where he lit it up for sure then went to san antonio then went to boston where he averaged 30 games so he never hit that overall of being a superstar but he definitely is showing some numbers to play like a superstar then he went to chicago for a few years where he lit it up then he went to miami played very well then went into Dallas. just had an overall solid career and has some really big years averaging a lot of points he was a two-time mvp but was never able ever able to capture that nba championship and was first team all defense five times first team all nba nine times so a very good player for a long time didn't really hit that superstar overall like a 95 96 but has some good stats won some mvps just never was able to capture that nba championship which is going to hurt him on this scale so if i had to rank it it's obviously better than t-mac because he has some really good years here one two mvps more consistent had the longevity going for him so i think this might be our first 3.6 could even put it out at 3.8 but i think a lot of these 3.8s i had him like like six or seven mvps and that kind of action so he only had two mvps here had some all-star games stuff like that was very consistent throughout the most of his career so i think 3.6 our first 3.6 is a good spot okay career number 58 for Bronny james retiring after 21 years in the league at 40 years old and he hit a pretty high peak here around year six and seven as a 95 overall then went down to around 94 93 and stayed consistent like that for a long time so he probably won a good amount of mvps just looking at the overall and he was drafted by okc played you know well he, he played his role then by like i guess year six or seven really started to emerge as the best player on the team and then he got to detroit 
and started lighting it up. Yeah, he went crazy in Detroit for sure. He played there for a long ass time, then went to Milwaukee as the second option, then went to the Lakers as maybe the best player, then went to Washington for his final two years. He was a four time MVP, won them four straight, and then he was a five time NBA champion. And for two of those championships, he also won MVP. So that's already a lock in him being the best player for those championships. Let's see when he won those other rings though. So he won in 2029, which I have to say second best player. And then he also won in 2031, which I'm also going to say second best player. It could be very possible that the league got very watered down by this time and he was the best player, but I have to go off what I've been saying this whole time. So second best player for these ones. And then he won in 2046, you know, third or fourth best player. So a solid ring, just nothing crazy. This one is very close to me. I don't know whether to put him right under Kobe or right over Kobe because he has five rings like him, but they're very different. He won two as the best player. Kobe won two as the best player as well. But the other three, I guess he also won two of them as the second best player like Kobe did. But that last one he won, Kobe won as the second best player. He won those as like a role player, third or fourth best player. So it is all very close. And he also won four MVP and was nine time first team all defense but I know I'm sure Kobe has his fair share of first team all defenses so I don't know it's very very close I think I'm gonna put him just oh man man it's it, it's tough the four MVPs are a lot as well so I think that might be enough to get him over the hump so I think I'm gonna put him right over Kobe it's close but I'm gonna put him right over Kobe here we are with career number 59 and this is the longest Bronny has played out of all the careers so far he played 22 seasons I remember sending this live and going wait is he gonna retire yet we got the 2046 I'm like why is he retired yet I'm like wow I'm really gonna go over 2046 because I haven't seen one go past that and then he finally did a 2047 playing 22 years in the league oh my god L look when by his third year he was already like an 87 88 overall like I can't even fit every single season on this graph because he played so many damn years but he was up to around like a 95 overall for a good portion of his career then he slumped down to like probably around 94 93 and then slowly declined down man had a very solid career and oh my god he played in Utah his entire career all 22 seasons he played with Utah, had multiple 30 point per game years, and was probably the best player on this team for a good portion of his career. And he was a 10 time MVP and a three time champion. That is a lot of MVPs. He won in 2034, 2043, and 2046. 2034, he won MVP, so that one's already there. But we have to check 2043 and 2046 to see if he actually was the best player on those teams. All right, so as for 2043, I'll give him that best player on the team, and then for 2046, we'll We'll say second best player so he won two rings as the best player and then he won one ring as the second best player i mean jesus christ this is a very tough one i think i gotta put him right over curry though maybe even at 7.4 because th those 10 mvps are very overwhelming bro and it's not like those mvps are like oh he did an average in like 22 game he had multiple 30 point per game years like he was dominant in the 2030s he was killing it just wasn't winning as, any, as many championships but he got his ring so i'm leaning either between 7.4 and 7.6 i think i'm gonna give him the 7.6 10 mvp is a lot and it's hard to argue against so i'm gonna go ahead and give him it career number 60 is here and Bronny retired after 20 seasons retiring on the spurs as an 84 overall and he started off pretty slow quickly jumped up to around a uh, close to a 90 overall by year four had a probably a big injury year five went back up to a 90 and stayed stagnant around like a 91 for a good decade and then slowly went down to an 84 so not bad and he was drafted by new orleans had a solid four years there and then he went to portland i think this is when he got injured and then he went back to new orleans for a good amount of years and had some big years for them played for a long time in new orleans then played for san antonio's last four years so pretty solid numbers nothing too eye-popping but i had a couple 30 point per game season. actually i think he had one 30 point per game season i believe yeah only one and he was a one-time mvp and a three-time nba champion i think those three rings or at least two of them are not going to be very valuable because he won them very early on when he wasn't very good and then we'll see how he was in 2044 so in 2025 2026 yeah he was probably like the fourth or fifth best player you gotta remember that's the algorithm team with zion brandon ingram all those guys so he could have even easily been like the fourth or fifth best player so yeah, not too valuable, but still good rings. And then he won in 2044, which I'll give him that second best part of the team. So that's a pretty valuable ring. It's nothing insane, but it's a good ring. So he won three championships, none of them which really mattered except the last one where he's the second option. So I think that either puts him right over Ray Allen or right under Ray Allen. It's very close because he does have one MVP. So he was recognized as one of the best players in the league for you know, for at least a few years. He never hit that overall standing, but he had some nice statistical seasons, probably better than Ray Allen's all-time statistics. So I think right over Ray Allen is fair, but if you want to say right under it, I guess that's fair as well. But I I'm going to put right over Ray Allen at a 5.2. Career number 61 is here. Brian and James retiring as an 82 overall after playing 20 years retiring on the Cavs and got up to around a 90 overall pretty quickly by year four, got to around maybe like 94 overall for a good four or five years, then went down to a 93, then stayed around a 90 for a good, you know, I guess around decade 
and then went down after his 18th season. So pretty normal career. And he was drafted by the Knicks where he started off hot, which I mean, I guess the team wasn't looking too good. They probably just had RJ and maybe Randall was there, but he probably got worse by then. So it was just him and RJ Barrett just going crazy. And uh, I think he played, he had some crazy ass years on the Knicks and um, he was there his entire career pretty much except for his last season being on Cleveland. And he was a seven time MVP, but never won an NBA championship. And as you guys know, that is going to kill us on ranking this career. But man, he was dominant for a long time on the Knicks. Had some really good seasons, but was just never able to cap off that NBA championship. Was a two time defensive player of the year and made first team all defense nine times. So as far as ranking this career, it's obviously has to be right under or over Kyrie because again, not having a championship, you have to have just an insane resume. And I think for a lot of these dots I've had here, he's had around like maybe like five or six MVPs and I didn't put him over Kyrie. So I think I have to be fair. He just couldn't get like, if he could have just got like one, like, like whatever ring where he averaged like 16 a game, then he probably would have got himself way higher because these stats are amazing that he has. But it's very close between these two. I think, oh man, it's, I don't, because he didn't hit a superstar overall, like he hit like a 93, 94, which I guess is kind of superstar, I guess, but I don't know. He didn't hit like 96, 97. So I think I'm going to put him at 3.8. It's close though. You can put him at 4.2, but 3.8 seems fair. Career number 62, Bronny James retiring after 19 years in the league, retiring on the Pelicans as an 86 overall. And this Bronny started off pretty slow. And then by year like six, he was finally able to jump up to a 90, stayed at around 92, 93 overall for a good four years. Then probably had a season ending injury, he went down to around close to a 70 so maybe towards ACL whatever it may be but um then went quickly back up to a 90 so never really hit superstar but pretty close to it he probably put up some superstar numbers so we'll see and he was drafted by New Orleans had a slow start to his career as we saw then picked it up by around year five year six probably ended up being the best player on the team at this time it's so weird whenever a player has like a season ending injury he always goes to a different team for one year and then just goes back to the same team I don't know if that's like a glitch or whatever it may be but it seems to happen really often and I don't know why it happens but but anyway, he did it, and um, it looks like he had a pretty solid career in New Orleans. And he was a four-time MVP and a one-time champion. The one championship he won, he won MVP in the same year. So, you know, obviously he was the best player there. First team all-defense five times, eight-time all-NBA. So this career may end up being higher than what we just saw before because, again, he, you know, he won it as the best player. And, you know, championships are very important to the scale. So, you know, I know I've been mentioning that a lot, but again, I've been recording these on all different days, stuff like that. So, you know, I'm just refreshing myself most of the time. So, yeah. I would actually put this dot right over Ray Allen because he won this championship as the best player on a team. And he has four MVPs. Ray Allen never won a championship where he was the best player. He won a championship where he was like the third or fourth best player. Then he won it as a role player. And Kyrie won his as the second best player. So I, I think putting him at 5.2 is fair. He's got the longevity. I mean, I know he had that one year he, where he was hurt. But he has the good. He has solid stats. He's got four MVPs. So I think I got to go ahead and give it to him right over Ray Allen. Maybe even could possibly go for 5.4, honestly. But, uh, you know, I'll leave it at 5.2. But you can make the argument for 5.4. And here we have Bronny James retiring after 11. Oh, sorry. 11. 12 seasons seasons in the NBA so this could be another potential bust look at this he actually got up to a 90 for a good like five years and then slowly went down so he had you know some nice years but this is looking like a I don't even know like like in between like a T-Mac and Kyrie as career but like on the lower end of the scale so we'll see what the numbers are so we actually started off his career he dropped it by New Orleans but he started off playing really well putting up 20 points per game he was the best player by like what year five year six yeah and then just slowly went down and was out of the league by 2036 so he, he played what he was I, don't, I can't even do the math there so he really played yeah he played 12 years right I don't even know why I'm trying to do the math there and he was a one-time NBA champion in 2029 and a six-time all-star so let's see how important he was to that team he did make an all-star team when he won that ring so he probably wasn't the best player but probably second or third so here's 2029 yeah I mean listen he could have very well have been the best player averaging 21 and 7 but I had to stay consistent I'm going to say that he was the second best player so winning a ring as second best player that might have just been enough to put him I, I don't know about over Kyrie but pretty damn close the ring is for sure carrying him so he's he's either right under Kyrie or right over Kyrie I think he has to go right under Kyrie because at least Kyrie has the longevity I know Kyrie has injury issues and all that kind of stuff but Kyrie just has better stats overall and he you know he's not out of the league by year 12 so yeah I, I think either maybe you could really even make the argument for 3.6 I think I'm actually gonna put this one at 3.6 because the longevity just isn't there and you know he has one ring that's great and all and he only has a few all-star appearances so I, I think 3.6 makes more sense career number 64 Brian James retiring 
playing as a 86 overall, sorry, on the Knicks, 19 years pro, and a pretty consistent career. By year three, year four, he was already up to a 90, kind of chilled around like a 92, 93 overall for the most part, went down to maybe around a 90. So, you know, just consistently stayed around to being a high level all star. And he was drafted by New Bro, so I, I think the most Bronies I've seen drafted have been to New Orleans, the Knicks, and the Thunder, I think. Those are like the three most common teams I've seen so far, but started off slow. He's a rookie. Don't blame him there. And then quickly became the best player on the team for a little while. Maybe the second best player. And uh, just pretty, uh, a pretty just consistent career. If he doesn't have the accolades here, this could be a Jamal Crawford or T-Mac Cavs career. So we'll have to see. And he was a two-time MVP and a one-time NBA champion. But he won that ring probably being a role player or second best player on the team. So we'll see when he won it. But um, yeah, not, not bad. So he won in 2026 where he was probably the third or fourth best player, which, you know, it's still a ring. It counts for sure. Um, but, you know, it's nothing crazy. He does have the two MVPs as well, so that is impressive. So he's easily over T-Mac. The championship and the two MVPs help for sure. He doesn't have the eye-popping numbers that T-Mac has, but, you know, he still has some very solid seasons as the best player for New Orleans. So I think just right under that career we just saw before. I think I think 3.4 makes perfect sense. This career may have the longevity that the other career didn't have, but I, the other career just had better numbers overall. So I, I just, it, it's a very close one. I could also put this one up at 3.6, and I wouldn't bat an eye at it, but I like 3.4. Here is career number 65. Bronny James retiring as a 82 overall on the Rockets and had a pretty quick start by year four was already 90 overall stayed stagnant then had a little injury there at year 10 and then just kind of stayed consistent so we haven't really had any overwhelming overall numbers um throughout any of these these past five careers it's all been pretty simple he's never achieved superstardom as far as his overall he's obviously had the stats and the MVPs but just nothing crazy as far as his progression and he was drafted by New Orleans again and again had that slow start and then quickly picked or not had the slow start but you know he was you know he's a rookie it is what it is but um he quickly picked it up in new orleans doing his thing and then he was moved to houston i think maybe during the time of the injury it looks like maybe around that time but um yeah lit it up in houston had a few very good seasons houston averaging 30 points a game so he, he was that guy and he was a three-time mvp and a four-time champion well already for two of those championships we know he was the best player because he won two mvp so let's see how he won those other championships so one championship he won his first season which he was a role player so that one you know it's a ring it helps but it's not crazy and then he won in 2030 which he very well could have been the best part averaging 20 and 10 like it's very possible but again gonna stay consistent i'm going to say he was the second or third best player so you know we're gonna probably second best player so um you know pretty impressive ring but two rings as the best player one ring as the second best player and one ring where you're a role player some pretty good accolades and then he also has the three mvps which helps as well um i think this career probably goes maybe right under or over curry at the time of this recording again at the state it one more time i don't know if he won his fourth championship so i'm not taking that to account but curry won one ring where he was the best player one two where he you could debate the second best player and this Bronny does have some pretty impressive numbers especially in those houston years so i think i'm gonna put his career right over curry's i think just having more rings and having more mvp just kind of gives him and his stats you know they line up with curry's for sure take a look at this Bronny only playing seven years in the league retiring as a 29 year old oh my god that is insane. Look at his overall. He never got better than like an 82 overall. Stayed stagnant for a good like, you know, six years. Then just shot down and retired like that that is rough he was the second overall pick in the draft actually he had some nice years for toronto like these are some good ass numbers but it's just nothing crazy and the longevity just isn't there he played like what seven years like it, this is pretty rough and he won rookie of the year and made first team all rookie these are all the accolades he has wow that's pretty bad bro i'm not gonna lie this is a pretty bad career bro i gotta say does it fall under johnny flynn no because he has better numbers than johnny flynn does i think either 1.4 or 1.2 is fair the man has no accolades he has nothing going for him he was good for he was a very good player for a good five years never made an all-star team at all like I don't even know where to put this guy. Like, it, it, I'm feeling 1.2, but I also feel like we... I don't know if we're going to get a worse career than this one. I really do not know. So, I'm going to put it at 1.2 because that that is the worst career we've seen so far, Bronny. That is a complete bust but i don't think it's worse than johnny flynn so we're gonna we're gonna leave it right at 1.2 career number 67 brian james retiring on the grizzlies as an 81 overall had a pretty slow start to his career got around a 90 overall by his fifth season then kind of stayed stagnant around a 90 overall for a good six seven years slowly went down after year 13 but i'm um, looking pretty good and he was drafted by the raptors and actually you know didn't go much in overall but had a hot start average in 22 a game his rookie season so he was playing really very well and by the fourth season became the best player on the raptors kept doing his thing in toronto played there for a 
long ass time. They went to Detroit and put up some good numbers. They went to Memphis for his final season. And he was a six time MVP. He won them six times in a row and was a two time champion. And he won those two championships as the best player, as we can see him winning MVP in those same years. So, um, won two championships as the best player, has some good stats for a long time. This is a pretty good career. This for sure is over Isaiah Thomas winning two championships as the best player, but also six MVP, six straight MVPs to back up his claims. Has some very good numbers over the course of his year, uh, over the course of his career. Sorry. Um, also, doesn't didn't hit superstar level as far as his overall, but definitely had some superstar type seasons. So. I would say probably a 6.6 .6 is fair. Our first 6.6 .6 of um, the video, I guess. So, um, yeah, I, I like 6.6. .6. Career number 68, Bronny James retiring on the Lakers as a 86 overall. Still has one year left on his contract, but I guess he decided, eh, I don't want that 35 million. I think I'm done here. So, I, 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 guess, I guess that's cool. I don't know if actually, actually, a great question. I actually don't know. If you retire and you still have money left on your contract, you don't get that money, right? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident you don't get the money. Anyway, had a pretty quick start by year three, already a 90 overall, and then stayed around like a 90 through 95 for a good majority of his career then slowly went down at the year 14 so we've had pretty similar um i guess progression stats for uh, for this last decade but um, i guess you know outside of those few bus careers we just saw but um yeah and as i was just scrolling down i saw this brawny just light up the stat sheet so um yeah so he started off in new orleans had a pretty good few seasons then he went to phoenix for one year and went crazy and then for the lakers he was putting up just godly ass numbers averaging 30 a game for most of these seasons and in his final season somehow dropping 30 a game the longevity is there just like his father and he was a seven-time MVP and a five-time NBA champion do any of the MVPs match up with the with the championships I am not too sure I don't think I'll, okay one of them do the 2036 one does but um, I think I have to check all these other rings to see if they correspond with him being the best player on the team. All right, so he won in 2031 and 2032. Easily the best player, not going to debate it. And then he won in 2037 to 2038. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt here on this in on this year and say he was the best player. It's close, but I'll say he was the best player. So, um, yeah, he won all of his championships as the best player on his team and won, what, seven MVPs? This is going to be a pretty good career. I think this career has to be an 8.8. .8. I mean, it's right under MJ. He won five championships as the best player and won seven MVPs. It's not MJ level where he won six championships as the best player or he doesn't have like eight rings and three of them he won as the second best player he has five rings won them all as the best player so i think and he has some really nice stats and some great longevity so 8.8 .8 i think is very fair i know some of these 8.8s are pretty crazy like nine time defensive player of the year i know that one slipped in there somewhere but you can maybe make the argument for 8.6 I, I really like this career though I, I really like this career he has some crazy ass numbers so i'm, I'm gonna go 8.8 .8. career number 69 brian james retiring as a 85 overall playing 20 years in the league and here's his progression so you know got up to around 90 overall by year three got up to around like a, we, we haven't had a superstar overall lebron in the past decade him just get up to like a 96 97 overall been pretty stagnant here but i'm um, just kind of chilled around a 90 overall for a good decade and uh yeah looks pretty good was drafted by portland and had some crazy ass seasons by his fourth year then he went to denver kind of chilled out a little bit had some good years as the best player for sure but uh definitely cooled down and he was a three-time mvp and a two-time champion one of those championships he won as the mvp so that one counts so let's see if that 2029 championship he won as the best player most likely did and i'll go ahead and give him that one 25 and a half points a game eight assists we'll go ahead and give him the nod on the being the best player so um yeah one two rings is the best player three to mvp is a pretty good resume it obviously has to be over isaiah thomas because they both won two championships as the best player but he has three mvp so you got to give him the nod there but i just don't think his numbers outside of those first like three or four years like when he was in portland are very impressive so i'm gonna put him right at 6.2 i don't think it's nothing crazy so yeah 6.2 seems fair here is career number 70 Bronny james retiring after 19 years of the league on the heat as an 85 overall here's his progression scale got to around maybe a 94 95 overall had a pretty quick start as well and um yeah just slowly went down and he was drafted by the thunder i'm telling you it's been the same like three teams okc um new orleans and i'm forgetting one more obvious team that we've been seeing a lot but yeah like he gets you i mean it makes sense though you know what i mean but he started off slow and then picked it up obviously he was a rookie so i mean starting off slow doesn't really mean anything but picked it up in okc is the best player has some really good years there then he went to miami and had some really good years there as well then went to new orleans then went back to miami for those last few years kind of having a i guess a last hurrah trip for five more years but he was a six-time mvp and a five-time NBA champion. So we'll see when he won those rings. Already for three of them, we can see he won as the best player because he was an MVP. So let's see those 2027 to 2028 rings, how viable he was to those teams. So here's where he won back-to-back. -back. Man, that's really close. I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say... <sighs> 
Oh my god, that's really, really close, bro. I don't know if I can annoy him the best player on the team at this time. No, I'm not going to give him it. It's very close because there's a good chance Shy was on this team and he was like a 95 overall and he was probably the best player. So I'm going to try to use a little bit of common sense. I'm not sure. Again, we don't know like the facts of it really. So, you know, I kind of have to go off what I've been saying. But I'm going to say he was the second best player for both these rings and for three of them, he was the best player. So still very impressive, but you know, it's not what we think it is. And if I had to go ahead and rank it, it's obviously over Kobe because Kobe won three championships as the second best player and one two is the best this brawny is the other way around has some really good seasons as well also has six mvp so he's either at 8.2 and 8.4 i don't really love this career like i don't think it's all that amazing but like i mean it obviously fits into the eight category i think it is very solid though so i think i think 8.2 is fair I, I mean you know you can make the argument for 8.4 but i, I, I like 8.2 here's career number 71 brawny james retiring after 19 years in the league as an 81 overall on the raptors and we may have just a very nice career here because he never even got up to a 90 overall kind of showed around like an 87 88 overall then i mean just never really turned into a high tier star but maybe he put up some high tier star numbers so we'll have to see but he played for 20 years so he was drafted by miami jesus christ we got ass in like two years well all right well he was the sixth pick in the drafts so maybe we trade up for a dra draft pick i don't know but um had some really good years in miami as the best player for a while overall wise he may have not been the best player but statistically i have to stay consistent so he probably was and then he went to atlanta for a good four years then he went to toronto and eventually retired he was a seven time all-star made first team all nba two times so again a very rare career where we don't see someone and win an MVP or an NBA champion. It really doesn't happen that often, but I mean, and if it does happen, it's usually a bust career, but I wouldn't consider this career like a bust. It's just a very solid overall career. I want to put him over T-Mac, but at least T-Mac at one point hit that superstar level where he was one of the best players in the league. For this Brody James, he was never higher than like an 88, 88 over, or 87, 88 overall. So I think I like him high Jamal Crawford, so maybe like a 2.6, maybe even 2.8 isn't crazy. So um, yeah, again, just not having an MVP or a ring just you know that doesn't really help so i think i'm gonna put him at two point uh it's either 2.6 or 2.8 i'm gonna go 2.8 i like that better so yeah i'm gonna rock out with that actually i lied 2.6 again yeah him not ever hitting a 90 overall is just kind of really taking over my head right now so yeah i'm gonna put him at 2.6 career number 72 brunny james retiring after 20 years in the league as an 85 overall here's his progression scale and he got up to around like a 94 95 overall looks like for a good decade almost and uh yeah so had a pretty slow start but by year five, he was a 90 overall, so, you know, looking pretty good. And he was drafted by Toronto. Toronto is also another team who gets drafted pretty often. I think I mentioned that during the 61 through 70 on, like, how often we get the Knicks, Portland, and then there was, like, I think OKC. Toronto is also a team where he gets drafted to pretty often, but I um, had a pretty good few solid first years, then quickly became the best player on the Raptors for a while. Oh, my God. Oh my god, this might be the highest point average I've ever seen on a Bronny so far this entire video. I don't think I've seen higher than 37.8 for a season, so that might be a record. Maybe I saw 38 and just, like, forgot about it, but that might be the highest. So then he went to where? He went to Chicago, then he went to Boston, but a very solid overall career. Definitely had some peak years as the best player in the league, just statistically. And he was a six-time MVP and a two-time NBA champion. For one of those championships, we already know he was the best player. Let's see that 2031. Here's the 2030 championship. So he won two rings at the best player, easily average 20 in game so we'll go ahead and give him that one so let's see where we're gonna go ahead and rank this one uh i think i have a pretty good idea so he's won two championships as the best player he has six mvps a lot of his numbers are very impressive averaging in the high 30s for some of the seasons so i think i'm gonna put him right at 6.8 i think those numbers really do shoot up um I guess his rating a lot. I think if he didn't have those crazy numbers just off the MVPs and the championships, he'd probably be like 6.4, 6.6. But I, those numbers are very good. So, and he has some solid longevity. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him right at a 6.8. I don't think it's better than Curry, but it's pretty damn close. You can maybe even argue 7.2 just for, for how crazy those regular season numbers are. But yeah, I'm going to leave him right at 6.8. Career number 73, Brian and James retiring after 18 years in the league. on the He retired as a 92 overall. Oh my god, he's gonna be really good. Well, never mind. I mean, he was good for a long ass time. He just never really declined. So we had a quick start, got up to a 90 by year three, and they got up to around like a 94, 95 for the vast majority of his career. He just never really fell off. So, you know, he stayed up high for most of his career. And he was drafted by New Orleans and played his entire career there, where he put up some solid numbers, but just nothing. Okay, he had a few crazy years in New Orleans there, but just to, I don't I don't know man I expected this is the highest overall I've seen him retire at and I thought he was just going to be a demon but pretty underwhelming numbers for what I thought it was going to be but he was a four-time MVP and a two-time champion he won those two rings when he first got to um I think he was drafted by New Orleans so um yeah, this is. A, I don't think those rings are going to mean too much, but they're going to help for sure. Yeah, he averaged 13 the first year and 18 the second year. So the second year, he was probably like the third or fourth best player because this is the New Orleans team with Zion, Brandon Ingram, McCollum, if they're all still there. So um, he was probably the third or fourth best player on this team. Um, but the first 
first year role player, second year definitely meant a lot more. So let's see where we go ahead and rank this. I feel like we've had some very impressive 5.8 careers, and I'm not I'm not sure if this one stacks up to that one. I mean, he's had some good years for sure. He put up some numbers, won four MVPs. I got all that. One defensive player of the year twice. I didn't mention that, but um, I think right at 5.6 is fair. Number one, and also because I'm kind of running out of space here, so it, it could be 5.8. It really could, but I, I like 5.6. It's obviously over Ray Allen because he won. I mean, the rings that Ray Allen won compared to this one, they're both very similar. He won as the third or fourth best player, then he won one where he was like kind of a role player in the, in the role for the Heat. So, um, and then he obviously had the better career winning four MVP. So it's over Ray Allen for sure. Just I don't think it's over IT. And I don't know if it's 5.8 because I think a lot of these careers are pretty impressive. I know I'm repeating myself, but you get the point. Let's put it right at 5.6. Here we have career number 74 where Brody James is looking like a bust playing nine years in the league, retiring as a 64 overall. This could be bad. Wow, that is looking bad. He got up to around like maybe like an 87 overall for a good four years and then just quickly went down after that seventh season and... uh yeah, it was pretty rough after that. Here's the stats. Had a rough start in OKC. His rookie season got a little better in his second year, but um, picked it up a little more. Became a viable piece. And then went to Boston for one year and was very good. Went to Denver for one year and was pretty good. Went to Philly for half a year and was okay. And then, I guess, closed out in Philly. Oh, okay, he closed out in Phoenix. So, a very underwhelming career. And, of course, he won three championships. Oh, my God. Again, these are the careers that really mess up our brawny NBA career scale because he won these championships where he probably wasn't even really playing a role. And he also was pretty much a bust. So, like, it just doesn't really help out. I don't know how this man won most improved player. But, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Let's see when he actually won the rings. So, he won in 2026. He won. He averaged 10 a game. He won in 2027 to 2028 where he was probably, the, you know, third or fourth best player on the team. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive. It's just nothing... It's nothing crazy, but these rings are going to carry the hell out of him, and I'm not going to be happy about where I put him. I'm not going to be happy. Again, those rings are carrying the hell out of him. He's either right over Ray Allen or under Ray Allen. I know you're looking at me going, oh my god, dude, and they're like, there's no way this guy's even better than like T-Mac, but it's like... Again, it's a very ring-dependent scale, so you have to just kind of stay consistent. So he's either right under Ray Allen or right over. I think I like. I think we're gonna use just a notch of common sense and put him right under Ray Allen, just because. I mean, the one ring he won, he averaged ten a game. He wasn't really that. I mean, he's viable, but it wasn't anything crazy. And he had a very short-lived career. He doesn't have the longevity that Ray Allen has. Um, and he won two other rings that are pretty impre not impressive, but they're pretty cool. Nothing crazy. Very Ray Allen-ish type rings. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it, it's nothing crazy. I mean, he did win two rings where he was, like, the third or fourth best player, which is cool and all, but I, I, I'm I going to use a little bit of common sense here and put him under Ray Allen. All right, career number 75, Bronny James retiring after 20 seasons as an 84 overall on the Grizzlies, and he had a bit of a slow start for the first four seasons, got up to a 90 overall around the fifth season and stayed around, like, a 93 overall for a good five years, then had a big injury year 12, bounce back and I guess we'll see if he goes to a random team for one year and goes back to the team he was on but um yeah then slowly declines down to an 84 so looking pretty good he was drafted by Phoenix which is pretty surprising because they're you know a pretty good team but um you know start off pretty good slow overall wise but you know played pretty well then quickly became the best player on the team after four or five seasons then had some 30 point per game years then went to Sacramento for one year then went to Dallas and he did his thing in Dallas and I think he re okay and then he retired to Memphis obviously and he was a one-time MVP and a three-time champion he won the MVP the same year as he won the ring so he was the best player on the team and then he won two more rings. So let's see where he won those two rings and um, how, how viable he was to those teams. So for 2031, he averaged 28.4 points per game. So easily the best player on the team. And then for 2041, he averaged 25. That's very close, but I will give him the nod. It, it, it's very close, but I will give him best player nod. It's right there at 25, so um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll give him it. So again, won an MVP, won three championships as the best player, so I think it's just right over Curry. Like, I don't think he, he has some very nice seasons as well. He has the longevity going for him as well. Um, So it's either right under or right over Curry. I think just because Curry has two rings where he was the second best player, and then he has one where he's the best player, just kind of, it's all very, you, you're really just kind of picking at stuff, so it's very close, but I, I think 7 Point two is fine. And again, one more time, don't know at the time of this coming out. I don't know if he has his fourth ring. I don't know. So, yeah, 7.2. If you've been watching through the entire video and you've heard me mention the Curry thing like five or ten times, it's only because I know people skip around and I know how long this video is. So, I'm making sure to mention that to them multiple times so that if they pick up on it, they don't have to comment it below and they don't look stupid because I've already been saying it a million times. So, you know, my bad on that because I just know how long this video is. So, you know, all right, let's continue on to career number 76. Career number 76, we have potentially another bust. I mean, playing 10 years 
originally retiring as a 66 overall. Let's see if he had some, you know, just rings to carry him randomly. And he never got better than around like an 83 overall. Stayed pretty stagnant and, um, yeah, just fell off after year eight. So a pretty rough career. Was drafted by Utah. Put up some solid numbers. Nothing crazy. But, um, yeah, these are some very six-man Jamal Crawford type numbers. And would you look at that? A, a four-time six-man of the year. I almost said six-time six-man of the year. But a four-time six-man of the year. So a pretty Jamal Crawford-ass career just without the longevity. So I'm either going to put this career right under Jamal Crawford or right over Jamal Crawford because Jamal Crawford had he doesn't have four six man of the year awards like this like this Bronny does but he does have the longevity going for him so I think Jamal Crawford just slightly wins that battle so I'm gonna put him at 1.8 it's close but you know yeah so another bust career here is career number 77 Bronny James retiring as a 89 overall on the Thunder and here's his progression scale we haven't seen this in a long time where a player gets around like to that like 95 96 area most of these Bronnies for the past like 10 15 years have been in that kind of 93 94 area so a very good brawny for a long ass time and he was drafted by phoenix and um by year three he probably became the best player on the team and uh, he had some crazy ass years in phoenix for sure then went to toronto for a few years then retired in okc so a very solid all-around career and he was a five-time mvp and a two-time champion we already know for one of them he was the best player because he won mvp the same year so let's see 2029 if he was the best player on the uh the phoenix team and here's 2029 and yep easily average 27 and 11 go ahead and give him it so he won two championships as the best player and won what i believe three mvps let me double check sorry five mvps he won five mvps and he won two championships as the best player had a pretty long career this is gonna be a pretty good career this one's very close i really don't know whether to put him at 6.8 or 7.2 because i do think this career is better than curry as far as like the mvps and numbers he put up but again curry has three rings this barney has two although this barney did win two of them as the best player and curry won one of them as the best player so we're just kind of splitting hairs here it is very close i'm gonna go 6.8 but again it's very close you can go 7.2 for sure Career number 78, Bronny James retiring after 19 years in the league on the Spurs as an 87 overall. And he had a pretty slow start, but got to a 90 overall around year five and just kind of stayed very stagnant for a good decade as a, like, what, like 92 overall. So, um, yeah, pretty good. And he was drafted by the Spurs, had a very solid first three years, then quickly became the best player, did his thing in San Antonio for a while. No, you know, mind-blowing stats. It's act actually, when he went to Utah, had some pretty good years. And then he went back to San Antonio to retire. And he was a one-time MVP and a two-time champion. So let's see when he won those rings, if he was the best player. So in 2037, again, like, it, it, he probably could have been the best player because of how watered down the league gets, but I have to stay consistent, second best player on the team. And then he won in 2041, which that one again is very 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 close but again i'm also gonna say second best player he could have very well been the best player on both of these teams but i have to stay consistent so he won two rings as the second best player and won an mvp i do think it's better than ray allen i think it's a notch over ray allen because he had some good years has longevity going for him just like ray allen has as well so it's either 5.4 or 5.6 i don't think it really meets 5.6 criteria because he only won one mvp so i think 5.4 is fair career number 79 Bronny james retiring on the warriors as an 85 over overall and had a pretty quick start by year three getting up to a 90 overall stayed stagnant around like a 91 92 overall area maybe even peaked at a 93 at that year seven spot and uh stayed pretty consistent and he was drafted by toronto and just started off doing his thing even though he wasn't a high overall he must have had the high tendencies to start balling out and by year three he was the best player on the team had some really good years for toronto oh my god he had three straight years averaging over 30 a game and then he went to phoenix and did his thing and then he went to orlando and then he went to milwaukee and then retired in golden state he was a two-time mvp and won a championship his first season although he could have been the second best player statistically um, but I'm going to use a little bit of common sense because when he was drafted, he was an 80 overall. So he was probably overall wise, like the third or fourth best player on that team. Um, but we can double check the stats. I'll, I'll look at it again. So yeah, statistically, he was probably the second best player. But again, like it's it's kind of tough because I'm using a little bit of common sense here, knowing that he was like a 79 or 80 overall his rookie year. So I, I'm, I'm going to say he was the third or fourth best player. It's a good ring to have and all. It's great. And he has great numbers. So we'll see where he ranks. All right. So again, he's got the championship where he was probably the third or fourth best player on the roster. He's got the two MVPs. So I I don't know whether to put him right over Kyrie or right under Kyrie. I feel like for some of these 3.8s, I had like seven-time MVP winners, but just never won a championship. This guy won two MVPs and was able to get the ring. And again, this is a very ring-based scale. So, and he's got the longevity for him going for him. He had some very good seasons. So I think 4.2 makes sense. He, he had a lot of 30-point per game years and he, he was doing his thing. So I, I like 4.2. And for career number 80, Bronny James playing 21 years in the league, retiring on the Nets as an 80 overall. And this doesn't show year one. I was looking at it, I was going like, wait, how did he start? off as like an 85 overall but that was he jumped up to year two that part and then he kind of stayed stagnant as an 85 87 overall for a good four years and then he finally got up to a 90 92 93 overall so he was hanging around there for a little while and then slowly went down after year 18 so you know not bad and he was drafted by new orleans played there for the majority of his career had a couple 30 close to 30 point per game season so had some
some really good years. Yeah, he played in New Orleans for a while. Then he went to Boston for two years. Then he went to Brooklyn for his final season. And he was a five-time MVP and a one-time NBA champion. He won that ring as the best player winning MVP simultaneously. So obviously he's got that one going for him. Let's go ahead and rank this one. So he's got the ring as the best player. And I think that ring is more valuable than right, both of Wright Allen's rings. So I think it's either, again, 5.6 or 5.8. We are running out of space on the 5.8 spot. He does have five MVPs. That is a lot. And he won a championship. He has the longevity going for him. He's got all that. So it's 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 very close stuff right here. I'm going to put him at 5.6. You could argue 5.8, but I, I like 5.6. Career number 81, Bronny James retiring on the Grizzlies after 19 seasons as an 84 overall. And he definitely got off to a slow start. Didn't get to a 90 overall until like year six and seven. Then just kind of chilled it around like a 91 overall for a good decade. And then that was pretty much it. He was drafted by Utah and played his entire career there. They're also having some pretty crazy seasons around this area, 2030 to 2034. Had some really good numbers to show. Even on the back end of his career, played pretty well. But um, yeah, retired in Memphis for his last season. And he was an eight-time MVP and a three-time champion. Two of those championships, he won as the MVP, so he was the clear-cut best player. Let's see when he won it in 2041. So in 2041, again, is it possible that the league got very watered down and he is the best player on this team? Absolutely, but I gotta stay consistent, although he also never even touched over like a 91 overall. So it's also very possible he wasn't the best player so i'm gonna say he was the second best player on this team so two rings as the best player one is the second best player and eight mvps it's definitely over curry probably in between that space of like 7.6 7.8 i like 7.6 because you know again eight mvps is a lot and he has a lot of very good seasons high scoring number seasons as well um, so it's pretty close. It's either 7.6 or 7.8 for me. I'm probably gonna go 7.6 though. Career number 82, Bronny James retiring on the Lakers as an 87 overall, playing 19 years in the league. And he definitely hit a higher peak in this career than the last one. He got the same kind of slow start as the, uh, sorry, as he did in that other career, but quickly got up to around like a 93, 94 area for a good five years. Then went down to a 92 and kind of showed it at 90 for the remainder of his career. So not bad. And he was drafted by Phoenix, had a good start by his fourth season, was averaging 30 a game. Oh, oh my, oh my, this might be the longest stretch of 30 point per game scene that I've seen from Abrani so far. Four years in a row averaging over 30 a game. We may have had some other years who averaged that much, but he was averaging 36, 34, 34, 33. Like, this is a long stretch of averaging 30 a game. So he had some really good seasons for the Lakers. I think he played there. Yeah, he played for the Lakers his entire career. Oh, wait, no, I'm stupid. He played for Phoenix and then he went to LA and finished it off. I'm, I'm dumb. Oh, wait, he randomly went to Portland for one season. Okay, that's weird. But yeah, he went to Portland. And he was a four time NBA, oh, sorry, not a four time NBA champion, a four time MVP and a five time. NBA champion and let's see how many of those line up with the MVP years so I think three of them do or wait no two of them do 2030 and 2032 line up with his MVP season let's see when he won it in 2029 and 2038 probably was the best player but we got to double check it all right so in 2029 easily the best player averaging 32 and 8 not not even a debate and then he won in 2038 where it's very very close where it's a tough call it's a very tough call I'm gonna use a little bit of common sense and say he was probably the best player on the team probably but again I could be wrong we don't have all of that information at our disposal so I have to make a lot of inference and you know just kind of calculated guesses so I'm gonna say he was the best player though so for all five of his championships he was the best player and a four-time MVP and one defensive player of the year so this is easily over Kobe's career and it's probably somewhere in between that 8.4 and 8.6 range I don't think it's obviously not better than MJ MJ is six because the best player has all it even has more accolades than this Bronny James does so I would say probably an eight 8.4, but five championships as the best player is very impressive. I, I, I got to give him something on that. I, I kind of want to give him that 8.6 notch, but I feel like we've had some very impressive 8.6 and 8.8 .8 type careers, so I think it's just slightly under it. So 8.4 8 seems fair. Career number 83 is here. Bronny James retiring as a 82 overall, playing 21 years retiring on the Hawks. And by his fourth season, got up to a 90 overall, and then kind of chilled around like a 92, 93 for most of his career. So, you know, nothing crazy. And he was drafted by Chicago and played in Chicago for his entire career. Has some pretty good numbers. Had a 30 point per game year. I believe it was in uh, 2028. But, you know, has some pretty high statistical seasons. Let's see if they actually made out to be any championships or MVPs. So he was a six time MVP, a 15 time All Star, one Defensive Player of the Year two times but was never able to cap off that championship. So it is going to put a ding on him as far as the scale because it is very ring dependent, but still a very good career. Just going to kind of go under the radar because he wasn't able to win a championship. I think we had one career at a 3.8 where he had seven MVPs but didn't win a championship. So I didn't put him over Kyrie. So I do want to stay consistent in that fact. But this Bronny also won two Defensive Player of the Year awards. And I don't know if that's what's going to put him over the hump. I, I don't know, man. It, it, it's hard because he didn't win a championship, but he had such a great career. It, it's a it's a really tough call. I'm, I'm going to go 3.8, though. It, you could make the argument for 5.2 or 5.2. 4.2, but I'm, I'm going to go 3.8. Career number 84 is here. Bronny James retiring 
starting after 18 seasons as an 81 overall on the Jazz. And this is a pretty regular career as far as he never turned into like a mega all-star or superstar or anything like that. He never even got over a 90 overall. His peak was around like a 87, 88 range. It kind of stayed that way. So just a very good player for a long time. And he played in Utah his entire career, even just year one, popping off average in 21 games. So he probably won rookie of the year. You know, just stayed pretty consistent. This is looking like a Jamal Crawford type career, but let's see if he was able to win any championships because if he was able to do that, then, you know, he may have some arguments for himself. And he was a three-time NBA champion. Yeah, so there you go. And a six-time All-Star. So let's see where those championships rank. He won them. He, he actually got a three-peat there toward the end of his career. So let's see how much those really matter. So he won in 2038 where he was probably the second or third best player. I'll give him second, I guess. Then he won in 2039 where he was probably the third best player. Then he won in 2040 where he was probably the third or fourth best player. So they're good rings. Just nothing crazy. A pretty normal career and just, you know, was never the guy ever in his career but you know not bad i think i'm gonna put this career just right over ray allen either at a 5.2 or a 5.4 it's a solid career it's solid numbers but it's just never really that guy though like he was never like the higher overall player that ray allen was but he has the rings that to back it up and he was very ring dependent he has more rings than ray allen and also you know ray allen won one of his rings where he was like a really you know he was a role player on the team and Bernie james won all of his rings where he was probably the second or third best player maybe one of them he was the fourth but still meant more to his teams than ray allen did to his championship team so i i'll say probably 5.2 is fair career number 85 Bronny james retiring on the bulls as an 82 overall playing 20 years in the league and a very similar career arc as we saw in the last one you know and this one probably just hit 90 around that year 13 spot and year 17 right there so he may have just hit 90 here and there but for the most part was under 90 for most of his career and he was drafted by new orleans had some good seasons for them there and then he went over to orlando where he probably was the best player and put up some good numbers as well and then i think he capped it off in chicago for his last season so not bad and he was a one-time nba champion an eight-time all-star made first team all defense three times um was first team all nba twice so again not bad just nothing crazy let's see when he won that championship if he was the best player if he won that while he was in um orlando that might be best player worthy oh he won in his last year in in New Orleans 2033 right there so he was probably the second or third best player on this team it's a good ring it means something but you know it's nothing crazy I think I'm gonna put this career right under Kyrie Irving although he does have the ring and for most of the time when a player gets a ring I usually put him over Kyrie but again he won that ring as a second or third best player the same way with Kyrie winning as the second best player for Cleveland and also his numbers just don't jump at the gym he never won an MVP he's got some solid numbers nothing crazy so I still think he doesn't crack over Kyrie but I'd say just under it even maybe 3.6 because the numbers really aren't doing it for me like that but I'll give the 3.8 career number 86 Bronny James retiring on the Lakers as a uh, ugh, sorry as a 79 overall playing 19 years in the league and again another this this could be potentially a bust that in terms of you know he has the longevity going for him but I mean like he never got over like an 85 overall this is definitely about this this could be a rough one so uh, hopefully he has some championships to back this one up to get him up a little bit because this isn't looking too good and he was drafted by the Warriors that's a weird one I don't know how that even happened but he had some pretty good years for the Warriors had some years and then he went to Detroit had some solid years but it looks like he was never the best player on his team so you know makes sense though the guy was never over an 85 overall so he was never the best player and he was a one-time all-star made first team all defense one time and was six man of the year five times all right well that's that is pretty crazy. So literally a Jamal Crawford ass career. Let's see where we go ahead and rank it. Winning five six man of the year awards is pretty crazy. So he has to be over Jamal Crawford, but just not really that much over. I think for this 2.2, I think he won like four six man of the year awards. So I mean, and he made first team all defense one time as well. I don't know how many all star appearances this one had either. So I think I'm gonna just put it right on the same line. So yeah, just just right over Jamal Crawford just for those six man of the year awards. It's cool and all, but <laughs> you know what I mean. It, it's nothing crazy. Career number 87, Bronny James retiring on the Thunder as an 84 overall playing 21 seasons and oh my oh my god this brawny hit like 97 overall this is one of the best brawnies i've seen so far overall wise he hit some pretty high spots here on this progression chart and um i mean damn he was good from the jump i know year one doesn't show that but i mean he got up to a 90 overall by year three and just started killing it so let's see if he has the stats to back it up and he was drafted by new orleans and by his fourth season or fifth season was probably the best player and then put up some crazy numbers for new orleans then he went to minnesota was dropping 33 a game for one year then he went to the clippers and put up some great numbers and wow oh my, oh my god went three straight 30 point per game years then went to washington for some years then went to miami for one year then went to okc he went to a lot of teams and he was a 14 time mvp 14 okay that that's that is ridiculous <laughs> how do you win 14 mvps and he won four nba championships one in 2025 one in 2027 2034 and 2041 okay so let's see so we can guarantee literally three of them he won as um like your mvps are so crazy that they have a dash between them to tell what the years he won them in like they're not counting off each year that's how many he's won like that is insane anyone two defensive player of the year award so let's see that 2025 
21 as a rookie, but let's see how much he averaged. See, like, if he was the second or third best player. He averaged 13. Okay, so he was probably like the fourth or fifth best player. So he won three rings as the guy, and then he won one where he was probably, you know, a role player, six man, something like that. I've been trying to keep this as realistic as possible, but 14 MVPs is pretty hard to ignore. Like, it is, that is not easy to ignore. So he has th three rings, three of them where he's the best player, one of them where he's, um, you know, kind of a role player, whatever it is. So it's got to be over Kobe. Those 14 MVPs do it for him. He, this might even be 8.8 .8 category. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I don't think we're ever going to see someone win 14 MVPs. So, um, yeah, I, I just think out of just generosity, I mean, but the, someone won nine defensive points. I know I keep bringing that one year up, but like, <laughs> that, that was a pretty crazy one. It's either 8.6 or 8.8, .8 and it, it's a really close one. I, I think I'm going to just, just to show love the 14 MVPs, I'm going to put it at 8.8 .8 because that, that's ridiculous. Career number 88, Brian James retiring on the Mavericks as an 85 overall, playing 21 years in the league. And a pretty solid career here, pretty much stayed stagnant as like a 93 overall, maybe even like 94 overall around there, 93, 94 for a good decade. So he was pretty good and he was drafted by okc and pretty much played there his entire career looks like he was never really the best player on the team though i mean maybe a few years he kind of snuck in as the best player but for the most part not really then he went to dallas and became the best player. i don't know if luca was there we have no idea but um yeah close it off pretty well and he was an eight time mvp and a six-time champion. Okay, well, this is a lot better than I thought it was going to be, but let's kind of count off these championships here. So he won in 2029, where he was the MVP, so he won as the best player. 2031, won as the best player. We'll have to check 2033. 2035, won as the best player. 2037, won as the best player. 2038, won as the best player. This potentially could be over Michael Jordan's career. If he won 2029, or sorry, 2033 as the best player, I may give him the nod as um being over Michael, but we'll have to see. It's going to be close. All right, so here's the 2033. I I'm surprised how he won MVP on something. It's like the, the league must have got so watered down and I think I have to give him the benefit of doubt and say he was the best player just to kind of follow consistency with the, with the rest of these MVPs because like some of these like he won averaging 23 24 points a game even 21 points a game so I think I got to give him it and say he was the best player just didn't win MVP so all these rings he won he was the best he, he was the um you know yeah, what you call he was the best player but again I'm sorry I have to use some common sense here like I, I I could just be consistent and say well because the other years or the other careers we've done he averaged 21 I didn't give him best player in, um on the team but this one there, there's a clear like there's other um, information around me I can use context clues to figure out if he was the best player. So, yeah. So, yeah, I guess this career has to go right over MJ. He's got six rings as the best player, has eight MVPs. I mean, I got to give him it. So, congrats. Another career for Bronny where he is right over Michael Jordan. Career number 89, Bronny James retiring on the Jazz as an 88 overall. So, this could be a pretty good one. And he actually had a pretty slow start to his career later on. Got a little better, though, by year five, year six. Got up to around like a, uh, like a 93, 94 and kind of stayed there for a good five six years then slowly went down so you know not bad and he was drafted by new orleans as with like half of these brownies are but you know started off pretty slow then got a lot better as the best player on the team then went to okc for a year then went to denver and just lit it up then went to boston and just lit it up and then went to utah to close it out and he was a no 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 why is the league getting so watered down in these last like two or three career simulations we've been doing a nine-time mvp and a nine-time champion and i think for all of them they all core let's see so he won mvp MVP 9014674413. Okay, so let's so some of these we have to kind of double check on, but again, this kind of gives us the information that the league was so watered down that most likely for these other rings, he was the best player on the team. So he didn't win MVP in 2028. He didn't um win MVP in 2033, and then he also didn't win MVP in I'm not sure which other ones correlate here. 2039 and then 2042. So we got a few to look at, but most likely he was the best player on all these teams. So for 2028, I mean uh that that's a tough one because I kind of have context clues about who New Orleans is. So I'm going to say second best player just because I don't think the league got watered down after like four years. So I doubt it, but you know, we'll say second best player. So in 2033, he won a championship. I'll give him that best player on the team for sure. And then in 2039, I'll give him that notch too as the best player. And then in 2042, he won at Utah. That's probably like second or third best player on that team. So that means for two out of nine of these championships, he won as the second or third best player. And for seven of them, he won as the best player on the team and was a nine-time MVP. Based off the way we created this scale, this is the best career we've seen so far. I think it warrants a 9.4. Seven championships at... Not, winning nine championships is insane, but seven as the best player and two of them as the second or third. I'm even tempted to put this at a 9.6. It's that close because, again, we're approaching Bill Russell category. Like, we're right there winning nine championships and nine MVPs. So, I may even give it that 
close to Bill Russell now. I don't know if I want to do that, though. It, it's between 9.4 and 9.6. I'm very torn on this. I, I think I'm going to give him it. I think I'm going to give... I don't know. But his numbers just aren't that overwhelming. Like, I, I he just kind of won rings in a watered-down league. But again, I, I, I don't know that because we don't have all those clues. So, I'm going to go 9.4 because I'm not that impressed with his numbers. But, you know, still had a very good career. Obviously, the best one we have seen so far based on the, how we've been scaling it. And for career number 90, Bronny James retiring on the Warriors as an 84 overall. And by year three, he got up to a 90 overall, got up to around like a 94 overall by year six, year seven, then went that back down to like a 93, 92 and chilled like that for a good decade. So, you know, cool. And he was drafted by the Knicks, had some, oh my, oh my God, averaged 36 and 11, 34. Oh my, oh, he was putting up some crazy, like, see, if this, if, if, if the Bronny we just saw in the last career had these type of numbers, I think I would have put him at 9.6, but he just didn't have those overwhelming numbers that I saw in some of these other careers we've seen so far. But still, he went to a bunch of different teams and then retired in Golden State. And he was a seven-time MVP and a one-time champion. We see he won the championship when he won MVP, so he was probably the best player, or obviously was the best player. So one championship, seven MVPs, pretty good. I'm not sure if the seven MVPs outweigh Isaiah Thomas, but it's pretty damn close. Also, the numbers I've just seen from Bonnie, he put up some of those 34-point-per-game years and 30-point-per-game years. Like, he was putting up some great numbers. First team All-NBA 12 times. I think I want to put him just... I don't know, because I feel like we've had some pretty impressive 5.8 careers, and I feel like this career kind of stands around with what we've been seeing. So I think I'm actually going to put it on 5.8. So this is kind of our first overcross or whatever you want to call it. Like I'm putting the circles over each other because I don't really have a spot left. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the circle uh, I'm gonna put it right here. There, there we go. We got 10 careers left. It's been it's been quite a ride, man. Let's let's get through these last 10, bro. This has been I gotta say like this whole pro we'll, we'll get into it into the end, but this whole process has just been you know fun, but you know, it's been rough. It's been tough, but it's been fun. So I can't wait to see the last 10 and see how this Bronny career scale really looks by the end of it. Here we have career number 91. Bronny James retiring on the Cavs as an 82 overall, playing 20 years in the league and definitely had a slow start. Didn't get to a 90 overall till about like year five, year six area, then kind of stayed around like a 92, 93, maybe at his peak for a good three years. Then slowly went down to 82. So not bad, just kind of a really slow start. And this Bronny was on a lot of teams. So he started in Utah where he just lit it up by his third season. Was just going crazy. He wasn't even like a 90 overall at this point. He was averaging 34 games as like an 88, 89. So, you know, he was doing his thing. Then he went to Detroit, putting up some bit. Oh my, he was he must have had some crazy ass tendencies because he never really hit super him as far as his overall, but still put up some very good numbers. He was a three-time MVP, a 16-time All-Star, but was never able to actually win a championship. So as you guys know, that's going to put a big hit on him with the brawny NBA career skill. So let's go ahead and see where we go ahead and rank him. It's obviously better than T-Mac. And I think, again, it kind of crosses this line of, does it cross over the Kyrie line of not having a championship? And we've definitely seen far more impressive resumes. I do like how early he started off getting good, like average 30 a game, but he never hit the overall stature of being even higher than like a 91, 92 for more than like five, six years. So just for that, it's either a 3.6 or a 3.8. I, I think, I don't know. I feel like there's been some really impressive 3.8 careers. So I think I'm going to put a 3.6. You could make the argument for 3.8 though. Career number 92, Bronny James with Tyrink on the Wizards as a 84 overall playing 19 years in the league. And very similar to the last career we just saw, very slow star didn't get up to he i don't even know if he hit 90 maybe he hit 90 at that year nine spike but for the most part was under a 90 overall for the vast majority of his career but again this brawny compared to the last one still put up great numbers even though he never hit that superstar overall that 94 95 overall but he was still putting up crazy ass numbers multiple 30 point per game years with the wizards and just he just kept popping off, man. And he played in Washington for his entire career. That's a weird one. I don't think I've seen... I don't I don't know if we've seen anyone drafted by Washington. Probably a few. But, again, the most common ones have been... I don't know. What were they? The Knicks? The Thunder? Um, New Orleans? And there was, like, one or two other ones that were pretty common. He was a five-time MVP and a three-time champion. Two of them, he won MVP when he won the championship. So, let's see if he won that 2041 and if he was the best player on the team. So, he won in 2040. Yeah, I'm going to have to give him as the second best player on the round. But he still won, what, two, two or three? I, I have to recount. So, he won two rings as the best player and one as the second best player. That's that's a pretty good achievement and a five-time MVP. Let's see where he ranks. So he's obviously over Curry because this Bronny won two championships as the best player. Curry won two of his rings as the second best player. So again, at the time of this recording, I know I have to say every single time. Just have to verify that because I know the finals are about to end when this comes out. So anyway, I think probably 7.4, 7.6 is fair. He does have five MVPs. That is pretty impressive. It has some big numbers to back it up for sure. He just never hit that superstar overall though. Like he never got over a 90 overall, maybe for like one or two seasons. So I think 7.4 is fine. And that is our first 7.4 of the entire video. All right, career number 93, Brian James retiring on the Raptors as a 78 overall after playing 19 years. And again, another very weird career. So that's
that's back to back to back just all kind of you know they're good careers but just nothing too insane especially just progression bar wise like he's not hitting these 94 95 overalls he barely even got over an 85 overall by year seven so this is gonna probably be not a very good player, but let's see if he has the stats to back it up like those other two careers just had. And he was drafted by OKC, and just scrolling down from the top to bottom, he definitely, I don't think he even had 120 point per game year. This might be the first career I've ever seen where Brian didn't average 20 in a, in a season. This actually might be. This might be the first career I've seen where he has not averaged 20 at least one season the entire career. I could be wrong on a few of the bust careers that we've had, but... That might be true. And he was a four-time All-Star, and that's about it. So, he, wow, this is a pretty rough career, bro. I don't even know if this is over Jamal Crawford. I'm not going to lie. This is probably either right under Jamal Crawford or maybe right over it because he does have the longevity, but he just never really did anything. So, I, I don't I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. I feel like the two careers we had here at 1.8 were very similar to this one. or at least, yeah, I think these ones were like he didn't win six man of the year, and they kind of just had kind of base stats kind of thing, or even were just more bust than this one. So... It's either right over Jamal Crawford or right under. He did make the All-Star team four times. That is impressive. That's pretty cool. But I, I don't know. I don't really like this career that much. I think I think right under Jamal Crawford feels feels fair. He never had too many crazy seasons. So I don't know. He was probably the best player on some of these teams where like they were really bad or whatever it may be. And he just never put up numbers like that. So, you know, I, I think I got to put him right under Jamal Crawford. But it's right there. You could argue 2.2 as well. Career number 94, Bronny James retiring on the Nuggets as a 38-year-old, 86 overall. And this Bronny had a slow start for his first two seasons. Then by year four was up to a 90, I guess like 92 overall. Then spiked up to around like a 94 and then went back down to a 93 for the vast majority of his career. So, you know, better than what we've seen in the past three ones. And he was drafted by Charlotte and definitely lit it up there for the last two years. And then he went to Minnesota randomly one year and did his thing. Then he went to Brooklyn for a while and lit it up there. He has some good ass numbers. Look at look at the Denver numbers averaging 30 a game for a few years. Averaging 34 and a half one season. And then I think he closed out his career in Denver. So pretty good numbers to back up his overall stats. So we'll see if uh, he's got the, uh, the accolades. And he was a nine Nine-time MVP and a two-time champion. The one championship he won his rookie season, so we'll see how much he mattered to that team realistically. And then in 2042, he won as the MVP, so that one he already got. But he was also a two-time defensive player of the year. So here's the ring. Oh, okay, so I guess he won with LaMelo probably, but um, I mean, he was a factor. He was like a third, third or fourth best player on the team. So, you know, it's impressive, but nothing crazy. But one ring has the best player, one where you're the third or fourth best player. Not bad. He has the same amount of rings as IT, but IT won both of his rings as the best player. But this Bronny James has nine. MVPs and two Defensive Player of the Year awards. So I think that is enough to kind of counteract him not having two rings as the best player. So it's either guy, I, I think I like 6.4, just nine MVPs is very overwhelming. So yeah, and he has the numbers to back it up for sure as well. It's not like it was like a watered down league. He put up big numbers. So I'll give him the six point. Yeah, sorry, 6.4. He played very well. Career number 95, Brian James retiring after 21 years in the league as an 81 overall. And he started off pretty good by year four, year five. He was already 90 overall. Then I guess got a season end ending injury year seven. Then probably got another season ending injury year 14. But um, for the most part, looks pretty solid. Just two big injuries. And he was drafted by Phoenix. That's the other common one we've been seeing pretty often. But has some big ass numbers for Phoenix. Then he, again, this always happens to where if a player gets injured for the season, they just randomly go to a different team and then they get to go to it. They usually go back to the same team. But this time he went to Toronto and lit it up so he has the numbers to back up some you know I guess he never really hit superstardom but still like he has numbers that'll make him look like a superstar and he was a two-time MVP and a 16-time all-star so no championships no rings so that's obviously gonna make him take a hit but still solid career nothing crazy though this is very similar to the career we just had before right it was like a 3.6 yeah this is very similar to that career I would even just put it on the same scale and not even trip over it 3.6 seems fair so I uh yeah I think I'll rock out with that 3.6 is fine career number 96 Brian James retiring on the Jazz as an 86 overall and already by year three he got up to close to a 90 overall then peaked up to around that looks like 95 96 so he got a pretty high by year five and went back down to around a 94 got a big injury in year 14 but stayed pretty stagnant to be a superstar for a long time in this league and he somehow started off an okc averaging 0.7 a game he just didn't get any minutes or maybe he got injured i have no idea but um yeah played an okc for a long ass time played pretty well then went to boston i feel like every single time brian goes to boston he just lights it up like every single time because he never gets drafted by them so like when he whenever he goes there he just somehow Average is 30. It's every single time. But he goes back to OKC for one year, then goes back to Boston and just keeps lighting it up and then retires in Utah. And he was a six time MVP and a three time NBA champion. For one of them, he won MVP the same season, so he was the best player. We got to see 2027 and 2041 if he was the best player on this team. So in 2027, most likely to, uh, you know, maybe, maybe second if he's lucky, but probably third or fourth best player on this team. And then for 2041, let's see where that is. He was probably the best player for Boston. So he's got two rings as the best player, one where he was the third or fourth best player. So pretty impressive stuff. This is very 
very similar to the curve we just saw before with the 7.4, our first one of the entire video. So I think I either like this at 7.6 or 7.8. I, I believe this one has more MVPs, and he just has better numbers overall. He was killing it in Boston for sure. So it's either 7.6 or 7.8. Six MVPs is a lot of MVPs, so I, I don't know. I, I, I like 7.6. Career number 97, Bronny James with Tyron on the Pelicans as a 85 overall. And again, by year three, getting up to a 90 overall, got to around maybe like 93 overall max at that year seven, year eight spot, then slowly went down and down and down, but still stayed around a 90 for the vast majority of his career. And he was drafted by San Antonio, and by year two was doing his thing, probably the best player at this point, and um, just kind of put up some solid stats. I mean, you know, not, nothing too crazy, but um, yeah, just good stats. And he was a two-time MVP and a one-time champion. He was most likely the best player, but we are going to double check it because he won MVP the two years after he won the championship. So we'll see. So he won in 2037. Jeez, that, that's pretty tough because these are the two MVPs he won, and he definitely had much better statistical seasons. So he, he could have, and he was on a different team as well. So I, I'm going to say probably was the second best player on the San Antonio team. He could have very well been the best because it was a watered down league. I don't, we don't have those facts. So I'm going to say second best player though. So a ring as the second best player, and he has two MVPs. I don't know if it's over Ray Allen just because the stats overall are not that overwhelming to make me put him over him because Ray Allen again has two rings. And I know, I know Ray Allen won his rings where he was one like a third or fourth best player and one being a role player. But still, again, this list is very ring dependent. And I think I've seen far more impressive careers to actually put him over Ray Allen. So I think just right under Ray Allen for this one makes sense. Career number 98, Bronny James retiring after 10 years in the league as a 69 overall, so potentially a bust. And oh my god, he never got better than like an 83 overall. Maybe got 84, but just was never that good. Maybe got hit with a few injuries here and then just fell off after year eight. So this is this is looking tough. So he was drafted by the Knicks. And look, see, even in these bust careers, he somehow ends up averaging 20 a game like in some of these seasons. I think that career we just saw a few careers ago was the first career I saw where he never averaged 20 a game. So, um, you know, this is pretty bad, obviously, but still... I mean, you know, he averaged 20 a game, if that's something. And he won six man of the year one time and was first team all rookie. This is pretty bad. This might be, this this could be on par with that 1.2 career we had. I don't remember the exact specifics with that 1.2 career, but this is pretty damn close. I obviously don't think it's under Johnny Flynn because that's just like, it's pretty hard to do. So I think it's either 1.2 or 1.4. This is a very bad career. This is a, <laughs> this is rough. So... I don't know. I think I kind of just want to fill in spots here and maybe put it at 1.4 just because. But again, it could very well be 1.2. If I remember that 1.2 career more, I could probably judge it better. You guys could probably go back to that one if you remember which career that was. But still, yeah, I think I like it at 1.4. It, it's very close, though, just because he had a few 20-point-per-game years. But this man has no accolades, like no accolades. Like he has a one six man of the year award, and that, I guess that's what what's carrying him, I guess. He had a few spark-up years, and that's about it. So I guess 1.4 is fine. Career number 99, Bronny James retiring on the Celtics as an 84 overall. And this Bronny looks pretty solid. Nothing crazy, though. Kind of got to around 90 overall by year four. And then just kind of stayed around like a 92, 93 overall for most of his career. And he was drafted by OKC. And then he went to Phoenix, then Dallas, then Sacramento, then Utah, then Brooklyn, then Boston. Jesus Christ, he played for a lot of teams. But... You know, some solid numbers, nothing crazy. He had some nice years in Dallas, so that was probably his best team. I guess Dallas, yeah, he played the best in Dallas. And he was a seven-time MVP and a five-time champion. I'm not going to lie, a little shocked about that. Those numbers, he had some good years, so you know what? I guess it makes sense, but still. Okay, so he won these championships in 2028. He didn't win MVP. 2030 didn't win MVP. 2031 didn't win MVP. And 2032 didn't win MVP. So all these years, he won the championship. He did not win MVP, so we got to check literally all of them. So he had a three-peat, and then he had a back-to-back. -back. So he just didn't win in 2029. So he won in 2027, probably, you know, third or fourth best player 2028 second or third best player then he won in 2030 probably the best player and then 2031 also probably the best player so he won two rings as the best player on the team oh wait didn't he three p oh my god he did three p that's right so he won three rings as the best player two of them where he was probably like this maybe second on one of them but most likely the third or fourth best player on both of those teams this career has to be over kobe for sure he won three rings as the best player on his team kobe won two of them again you could debate all you want between chat and kobe whatever you want to do but still the man also has seven mvps so that definitely puts him over we've had some very impressive careers between the 8.2 and 8.x, 8, eh, sorry, 8.x, eh, my, oh, wow, that is some good, listen, bro, we're, we're right at the, you know, we're right at the, the end here, so, you know, I'm trying to, I'm doing my best here, but still, um, I don't know if this is 8.2, 8.4, 7 MVPs is a lot of rings, or, is a lot of rings, see, see what I'm, see what I'm talking about, bro, this is probably my worst one yet, this is, this has been so bad, but anyway, um, I think I'll put it at 8.4, it, it's, it's, yeah, I guess it deems that, 7 MVPs is a lot, so we'll give him it, actually, I don't want to give him 8.4, because he just never overall turned to a superstar, like, he was, like, a 93 for the most part, which I guess is close close to. I don't know. It's, it's it, we're, we're splitting hairs here on career 99. It's not really a big deal. So we'll, we'll go 8.2. And finally, career number 100. How far we have came. You just saw career 99 where I just couldn't even
even talk. But um, yeah, this is the home stretch right now. And um, this is the final career of Bronny James that we are looking over. Over 100 hours poured into this. Over 2,000 seasons simulated. It's going to all end right here. Bronny James retiring after 20 years in the league as a 75 overall. And oh my god, he never got good. <laughs> like, at all. He had an injury um, in his ninth season. Never got over an 85 overall. It looks like maybe for one or two of those seasons, he was up to like an 87, 88. Maybe, but I doubt it. But um, yeah, pretty yeah, average player. And he was drafted by Dever. Even though he was average, he was lining up though he's putting up some crazy ass numbers then went to toronto then went to new orleans then went to charlotte then went to sacramento then went back to charlotte and still although being a low overall he was still putting up good numbers probably because of his tendencies but he was doing his thing and he was an eight-time all-star won six man of the year first team all defense twice but just never won an mvp or a championship which i'm kind of shocked because you know he did put up some big numbers i don't know i i know he, he, he didn't fit the overall wise but still he could have maybe snuck an MVP in the watered down league, but maybe he didn't get watered down and it was pretty comp. I don't know. So um, let's go ahead and see where we rank the 100th career of this video. So just a multiple time all-star, a very good player. I don't think it's over T-Mac because he never peaked as one of the best players in the league. So it's probably in this 2.6, 2.8 area just because the man literally has no other accolades. I mean, he has some first team all defense. He has one six man of the year award. It's just not that overwhelming. So I think 2.6 is fair. And that is the final career we have to rank. So now I guess we can just calculate a few numbers based off where these green circles are, are placed. What are the percentages of what Brody James' career turns into according to 2K? So for example, Brody James has a 3% chance to have a MJ Bill Russell-like career. He has three of those green circles placed there. So that is his percentage because it's out of 100. So it's pretty simple math. And then for the Kobe MJ career, I guess we'll just do the math here. 4, 7, 11, and then we have 7 more here. He has an 18% chance to have a Kobe. MJ like career and then we have four five nine uh, 11 so he has an 11 percent chance to have a curry Kobe type career and then here we have two three six nine he has a nine percent chance to have an Isaiah Thomas curry type career and then one two three four five six seven eight and then we have 12 here and then 15 and 19 20 a 20 percent chance to have a Ray Allen Isaiah Thomas type career so that's the highest um percentage we've had so far i think the uh, the michael jordan kobe one was 18 percent, i believe so the isaiah thomas ray allen is the highest percentage so far and then we oh, i didn't even notice i made a one here that's pretty cool but anyway one two three four five six seven a seven percent chance for a Kyrie ray allen type career and then for the t-mac Kyrie career we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen a seventeen percent chance for this one and then for the jamal crawford t-mac career we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten a ten percent chance and then for the johnny flynn jamal crawford type career which is pretty much close to a bust a five percent chance to become a bust i also took screenshots of every 10th career we did so we could see the growth of the brownie career scale so this is one through ten then we have 10 through 20, 20 through 30, 30 through 40. So it kind of very evenly spread out. We never really, I never felt like we had for each 10 we did. It always felt like we had bad and good careers. I don't feel like there was ever like a 10 stretch where we just had 10 amazing careers. Like it was very even throughout the entire time. And then I guess the end here is, is none of them on there. But this is all 100 ranked just like uh, I, I went ahead and said I was going to do. So one last time, this is the official Brawny 2K NBA career scale, whatever you want to call it this is what nba 2k thinks is going to happen the brian's career so the most likely outcome is the ray allen isaiah thomas type career a few other big ones as well with the kobe mj one we have the team at Kyrie one but the majority vote is the ray allen isaiah thomas type career i'm sure there's plenty of other little stats i could provide from each career or just like you know like maybe one like oh what team was he drafted to the most stuff like that but i think you know we were here to get the gist of what would happen to each of his careers not really where he's going to get drafted but the vast majority were the knicks the thunder under New Orleans. Um, there were a few other ones that were pretty common, but it was kind of the same five or six teams, a few random ones here and there, but for the most part, it was kind of those four or five. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed simulating Bronny James' career 100 times in 2K22, man. This took a long ass time to prepare to get the, the Bronny right, to get the careers right, to make sure everything's in check. That took a few days, and then actually simulating them, like taking, again, every career sim takes anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half to do depending on how long he stays in the NBA. Remember, I'm simulating two seasons before it actually starts. So you have to add on two seasons to every single career by default. So again, just how long this took, how many days this took. And again, I was trying to keep my life together while doing this. I didn't want to just kind of, you know, sit in this chair for 24 hours and do this and kind of mess up the rest of my life and, you know, not be able to do anything else. So again, I tried to keep pace with it. Now, I'm not going to lie, when I got to around like year 80, I kind of hit the home stretch and was pulling all-nighters to get it done because I just wanted to get this video finished because of how excited I was to get this out to you guys. But, um, 
yeah, this was a lot of fun. It was a big process, definitely mentally draining, but a lot of fun to do. If you guys want to see this again with another player, possibly now, it's going to be a while because I for sure need a break from doing a video like this because this took a long ass time to prepare all that stuff and to do. And again, if you have any issues with the Bronny career scale as far as the players on there, that took a while to make as well. I did my best again. The, 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 uh, the scale was very ring based and I tried to keep it that way. Obviously, you know, Michael Jordan's better than Bill Russell all the time, whatever you think, but still, like, he has the accolades to fit this scale better at number at the 10 spot than Michael Jordan does. Be sure to leave a like on the video, all that fun stuff, man. Like, really, you know, share the video, whatever you gotta do just to kind of get it out there, bro. I'd appreciate all the support because it's just how long this actually took me. And then also, while uploaded consistently, thank you to my editor. Um, yeah, I'll have him in the description. Well, I, I edited this video. This whole video I did myself, but, you know, he was, I was sending him videos to edit so I could keep consistent on YouTube while having to work on this on the side. So without my editor, I wouldn't even have been able to do all this. So, you know, to get out, still get out consistent uploads. So, um, yeah, man, this is all behind the scenes stuff that I was putting together. But, um, I think that's pretty much it, man. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Still, still uploading consistently. I'm not taking a break or nothing. We're still going strong. But, um, yeah, it's going to go ahead and do it. One finger, one pinky, one thumb, one love. I love y'all. Appreciate all the support. I'm out. Peace. Fade the black. All that fun stuff. And, uh, God damn what what a ride